Jackson, what did you say? Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Here we are at the Orange Bowl for tonight's matchup against the Fredonia Hillbillies and the Southwestern Trojans. One of the most heated rivalries of all of Western New York. I'm Shannon Davis. Rob Sherino is here with me. And both teams are coming off a one and one record, but none of that matters tonight. Hillbillies, Trojans, it's always the game of the year on the calendar no matter playoffs regular season neither one of these teams want to lose to each other rob uh no and as you can see for those of you that were here in the stands uh they were quite heated when they were coming on for their introductions yeah there's a long history here there's, there's always this pre-game standing on our logos middle field peeling over into warm-ups this started years ago fredoni already got a penalty it's pregame, standing at midfield, walking up to the Trojans as they came through their banner. Words were exchanged. Officials had to run out and separate the two teams. And I believe Fredonia is going to get the first penalty of the game. And they'll start off 15 yards one way or the other, whether they're <laughs> kicking or receiving. And Coach Sherlock was not happy. But, guys, it's no surprise. This stuff has been going on for years. Both teams have been guilty of complete nonsense. Um, and, and they don't like each other. It's plain and simple. It's always, always an intense game. It's usually not played all that clean, and there's always stuff going on between parents and, and everyone else. So stay tuned. It's going to be an action-packed night. Uh, a little history here, Rob. Uh, traditionally, for years, Southwestern um, kind of dominated this rivalry, but the last three games, um, two seasons, three games, Fredonia has won the last three in a row. All three of those games, Fredonia had an early big lead. Southwestern came charging back, almost stealing victory in all of them. And starting in 2021 regular season, 27-25. Again, Fredonia was up by at least three scores. Aiden Kennedy led the Trojans back. The last play of the game, they scored a touchdown. They could have gone for one and tie it. They went for two to win the game, and Kennedy was stopped on the carry. Fredonia win. We met in the playoffs, That's the right. semifinals in 2021 to go, excuse me, 22, no, 2021. Yep. And to go to the stadium, huge game. Southwestern had, it was home, but was in Dunkirk. Southwestern was way down. They came charging back. They were driving towards the end of the game. Davison Quinn came up with interception right around Fredonia's three, four, five yard line to seal the win and for a 28-21 Victory, knocking Southwestern out of the playoffs, and more importantly, clinching the first trip to the Ralph in a long time, or you know whatever we're calling the Bill Stadium today. <laughs> Last year, 28-21, overtime. Fredonia was up three scores. Southwestern came charging back, tied the game. It was sudden death overtime. So Fredonia got the ball first, scored on the second play. Southwestern had first and goal appeared that they were going to score and tie it and go to the second possession, a fumble. Uh, Walsh, who we'll see tonight, when Jamison Walsh, the best player in Southwestern, fumbled the ball. Sammy Atzrott recovered another Fredonia victory, and that game basically sealed a three-way tie for the division winners between Fredonia, Southwestern, and Salamanca. So, and all three of those were heated. All three of them were very physical, a lot of smack talking, a lot of penalties, a lot of stories of a lot of dirty stuff. So crazy, crazy things going on. But yes, you can see, if you're looking here, folks, the ball's going to be kicked off from the 25. Uh, normally, it's not kicked <laughs> off from the 25. So that was the 15-yard penalty Fredonia started out with. So no matter what happens here, Southwestern should have great field position. It's definitely going to be a great night for some good football and uh, two great football programs here. So here we go with kickoff. And it's Aiden Shikansky kicking off for Fredonia. Looks like Jamison Walsh is back. And you read that number from the back? I can't quite like see 39. it. 39. 36? 35. Matthew Strong Butterfield has the ball. Got a hole 50. up the middle. Cuts to the outside. Aiden Shikansky, the kicker to beat. 
and he is gonna go all the way for opening kickoff return for a touchdown. And ironically, Rob, I didn't get to this in the pregame, that's Southwestern's first touchdown of the season. It's their third game. They lost to CSP. The they lost to CSP in the first game um, by a lot to three. They won three to nothing last week, scoring one field goal in each game. So that's their first touchdown um, there. And that was the direct result of the penalty and not the start you want for the Hillbillies. And if you look at that sideline, Coach Sherlock is furious right now and I can't say I blame them. No, no, I mean the, the, the Hillbillies are gonna have to rally back now. They're gonna have to keep their heads up, uh, get that touchdown behind them. Uh, it was a good 75 uh, yard touchdown it looked like, uh, run back. Southwestern has one of the best kickers in all of um, Western New York. Neves Hoos, who has the, made two field goals so far this year and easily makes that extra point to make the score 7-0. Uh, Fredonia over Southwestern. Our scoreboard still says Randolph. Uh, we'll get that fixed in there. But obviously we are playing Southwestern, no problem. Um, we'll get that fixed right away. But, man, rough start for the Hillbillies. And talk about taking the air out of everyone. Yes, I was very surprised that was going to happen right away. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. But when you're kicking, again, that 15-yard penalty, you have to kick off very differently. Nice seam, nice blocking. And again, the returner for Southwestern, you said that was 35. Number 35, Matthew Strong, Strong. Butterfield. Uh, he's only had one attempt this year and only four yards. So, uh, yeah, he's going to have a nice stat today. Right, the all-purpose yards are already pretty high. Um, it's also, I don't know if we've got any shots of the crowd so far, but it's been a tradition here in Fredonia to do the Christmas theme against Southwestern, going back to the latter days and uh, the rivalries there and summer ball. And again, nobody likes anyone in this rival, at least on the field. Um, and they are representing once again, you'll see a lot of Christmas in September. We hear Christmas in July. We have Christmas versus Southwestern yearly. And Southwestern here, Rob, they are known to do everything but kick it deep. Hooves is, again, one of the best kickers we know and around. We Hoos, I mean, and we've seen him for a long time. So look for onside here. And Fredonius expects only one guy deep, and that's Luca Gullo. And he does kick, kick it deep. deep. He's going to kick it, and it's going to go into the end zone, pinning Fredonia back. So they definitely only have one guy back, so it made it easy for him to direct it and kick it in the end zone. But if they score more touchdowns and have more kickoffs, at least have one in the second half, um, don't be surprised if you see onside kicks. Southwestern are very good at it, and they've recovered many of them against Fredonia. So right now, special teams obviously the focus uh, based on playing Southwestern, it sounds like. Yeah, yeah, they're good at it. now. Here's this Fredoni offense. You got Sammy Atzrat last year, we came, Connolly Cup award, award nominee. The first week, Davi White, the quarterback, was a Connolly Cup award nominee. Trips left, empty backfield, just Davi. A lot of times they're running quite a bit, quarterback draw out of that. No, yes they are. Davi White takes it, but Southwestern was ready for that. Again, everybody knew what to expect there, and Southwestern was ready there on play one gain of about let's see where are they starting it oh he did get almost three, three. Yards, yeah yep. yeah so it's like forward progress at least they gave him that so second and seven luca gullo's in the backfield right now I don't know. It looks like it was just playing and owen rush is back tonight too which is great to see after he suffered a a knee scare last week. Gullo on the carry, and the oh, ball, ball is out. out. Ball comes out. And Fredonia looks like they were able to jump on that. Big break for Fredonia. You see the official signaling third down. Let's see if we can see who is able to jump on that. Looks like Ian Story possibly Looks saved like the he... day here for Fredonia. I don't know if he ever really had that, as you can see on that replay there. Jackson, you go back one more time. Never mind, never mind. They're lining up. But I think he just never cleanly had that and almost bounced off his leg, kicking it forward. He wasn't able to get his uh, top hand yeah. down on top of it to sandwich it in. So they actually gained a couple, three yards on that play. Empty backfield here again. Trips left. Two receivers right. 
Well, he takes the snap, drops, he's gonna look to throw, Man. but he is sacked immediately by number eight, Jamison Walsh. And that is gonna bring out fourth and about 10, depending on the spot. So you couldn't draw up a better start so far for the Trojans. No, they, they're here, and they're, they're fired up. They're ready to go. I'm sure that kickoff return definitely put the spark underneath them. Yeah, and if defense. you see that replay, that's a blocking mistake there. Walsh came off the end untouched. No one was there to block him whatsoever. So on the punt is Bryce Bacher. Southwestern literally has no one back to return this right now. So they're coming after this punt. And look out for Walsh on the right end. And they do block it. And it's going to be a Southwestern Trojan touchdown. Two special team touchdown early. George Marshall, George Marshall, number four with the touchdown not sure let's see if we can get a replay on this but you saw they were coming and there was three guys in there that had a chance to block it good start oh here hillbillies. it is 14 looks like he got the block that is 14 brody larson and four george marshall on the sophomore scoops it up and falls into the end zone and it looks like it's about to be 14 nothing deficit here for Fredonia as Neves Hoos comes in to kick it. First team all league kicker last year. And he boots that in no problem, kicking it over the bleachers almost out into Main Street. He's got quite the leg. Fredonia's got to find a way to get themselves back into this game very early on. Yeah. And, you know, and okay, ironically, they've scored. Two touchdowns. They still have no offensive touchdowns no. on the season, but they have two here already tonight. Kickoff return, a block punt, return for a touchdown. And special teams. Very, yeah. Southwestern special teams today definitely, definitely showed up to play. Fredonia on that last series, only about six yards of offensive production, uh, which led into the block punt, which ended into a Southwestern touchdown. So again, you can see based on this formation, Fredonia is almost expecting the onside. They're conceding letting who's kick it in the end zone, really, because he can direct kick away from Gullo if he wants to either side. He's that good and can kick it in the end zone regularly here. So, but again, would not be surprised if they try something else, but if we're first time pinning them back to start in their own 20. And here comes Hoos. Gullo once again is deep. And this time he's doing a directional kick. And again, that's a great kick. Yes. Gullo rolls the goal about the seven yard line, makes a cut good there. Cut. Good cut, but 21. good. Uh, tackle 21. Gullo is on the carry. Tackle by, is that four? Yes, that was four. Once again, George Marshall, the man that's just scored the special teams touchdown, comes up on the tackle there. But. That kick also very successful in pinning the Fredonia Hillbilly offense back. Fredonia starting on their own 21 yard line. Got to get this ball moved up. So here we go, Gullo again in the backfield. I'm not sure where, where Sammy Atzrod is standing on the sideline. I don't know if anything's wrong here, but so, Davi White's going to keep it, and he's going to gain a few on the first down, but he's sworn by those white Trojan jerseys. Looks like at about a gain of four. No, they were, they started on the 21, so. Gain of three? Yeah, gain of three at most on the plays. We second down and seven. And we got that scoreboard fixed. Good job, Jackson. And Atzrat remains on the sideline. We're going to have to keep track of that. Atzrat on the year, uh, if you give me a half a second here, he has 352 yards rushing in two games. We have a Davi and, Pumps, oh, and no. he's going to be sacked again. He is taken down in the backfield very hard by number 58, 68. Who's... Another Hoos, Tavio Hoos in there with a big sack, a sophomore. This is a pretty young team for Southwestern, um, but they're bringing it defensively. Of course, they had a shutout last week, went three to nothing. Now, Azrat should be out there, right? Is yeah, oh yeah, I, I don't know. 
what the story is there. He doesn't appear to be hurt. He's standing right here on the sidelines. And there's a confusion on the sideline. Coach Falvino arguing almost with other coaches what to call here in third and 14. And it's a big play. You don't want it to punt again so deep out of your end zone. You definitely don't want to turn over. And again, turnovers was the story last week, Rob. Uh, four interceptions for Fredonia. Two of them went back to the pick sixes. Ooh. And uh, not what you wanted last week. And it was a 46-40 game, so a six-point loss. And they gave up two defensive touchdowns last week. So another problem. And it looks like maybe they needed to tape up Davi's uh, wristband. wristband a little bit. And that might have been the confusion with the play calls there. Now the, a great job by the camera crew catching that and letting the fans know why maybe Fredonia is forced into taking a timeout early. Again, everything that seems it could have go wrong so far for the Hillbillies has. And unfortunately, that's the case. I mean, Southwestern's defense, block punt, two sacks, touchdown off the block punt, and their special teams. Yeah, and both, technically both of those touchdowns would be special, special teams. teams. So, yeah, yep. yeah punt return team yeah but a lot of the obviously punt block team is probably starting defense too so such a classy football so here we go and Antra is still not out there Gullo with white and it's really changed the look of this offense we haven't seen Jamison Quinn get the ball at all this year already has four touchdowns on the season in two games 17 catches white is looking deep he has Han and he hits Han Midfield, he crosses the 30. 30. He could go all the way, and he does. That is Hans, I believe, only his second or first catch of the season for the senior, Mike Hahn. And that was a 80 plus, yeah. about 84 yard touchdown pass from White to Hahn. You can see him bob on it. He hangs on and he accelerates. I thought it, that was Tim Field. Oh, I'm sorry, one. that is Tim Field. Tim Field. Tim Field. Sorry, Han is 11, Field is 1. Has only had one reception in 15 yards. Yeah, season. well, That's a good way Tim to start. Field, way to get back on the field. Unfortunately, he was unable to play last week. And Fredonia really uh, missed him, obviously. But Field, who had a number of big catches, four touchdowns last year um, for Fredonia, and came up big here in third and 14. Perfect throw by White standing in the pocket after getting sacked two times. Great to see Fredonia rally back. You see the crowd now starting to get back into it. Yeah, and the, and the bleachers are starting to fill up. I thought it was a little light here for a Southwestern game. Now all of a sudden, it looks pretty crowded. Another flag Another on penalty. the play. Yeah, it must have been after the touchdown. So I didn't, I didn't see, see that either. either. I'm sure it was probably unsportsmanlike of some sort. Lack of discipline has definitely cost the Hillbillies so far. 8.30 left in the first quarter. Fredoni 6, Southwestern 14. So we got Brown, Hahn, and Fields to the left. Jamison Quinn all by himself to the right. And if they don't get that corner some safety help, don't be surprised if White goes to Quinn. Now the safety is going over top here, but he always looking to the trip side. Oh. He spins away from Walsh, who just wanted to hit him instead of wrap him up, see if White can make yeah, him pay. Yeah. And he has no one to throw to and had to throw that away. So Jamison Walsh was in there quickly and could have easily sacked White, but he went for the hit instead of the tackle, and White was able to spin away. But, but it's going to be Fredonia 6. Scoreboard says 0, Southwestern 14. So still down by one score, touchdown, two-point conversion would um, tie the game. But we're only eight minutes, you know, we're half of the first quarter. We've seen three touchdowns already. We've got plenty of football and left. There's, and there's Walsh there missing, white rolling. Great job by our crew. And you can see there's nowhere for him to go. Great coverage by the Southwestern there. So let's see what... Coach Johnson in the Fredonia special teams dial up on the kickoff. Notice they're actually kicking off from the 40-yard <laughs> line this time instead of the 25, and that is a big difference. And for those of you watching at home, it is Fredonia 6, Southwestern 14, with 8.30 to go in the first quarter. 
It looks like, yeah, we got a new kicker here. It's Caden Rittenberg. Um, another, there's, I believe there's four soccer players playing football this year to kick. So obviously Aiden Shikansky had taken on a lot of that, and now Caden Rittenberg, the junior, is kicking for Fernonia. And let's see what the, and Sam Atrot's out here for this, so I'm still not sure why he's not, wasn't playing offense so far. Did he play all the last game? Perfectly placed kick, it's gonna go out of bounds, but if you know Fernonia special teams, they traditionally have no problem with that. And let's see what Southwestern is going to choose to do. We, when Randolph made them re-kick it and took the five-yard penalty, a lot of teams just accept it, but it looks like... Looks like they're keeping their offense out there. Yeah, they're, nope, they're pushing them back, going to nope. make them re-kick it. Um, and I kind of like the strategy. You know, one of the reasons traditionally you have no problem kicking out of bounds because, well, what happens when it kick, you kick to their deep guys? They run it right back right for back a to touchdown. touchdown yep. So most high school special team units have no problem just kick out of the bounce, take the ball at the 40, and on their way they go. But now five-yard penalty, and you can see, again, that is Rittenberg kicking back to the 35 this time. And Randolph had them do it three times in a row in week one. And here goes Rittenberg once again, and he's going to kick it short in the middle, right to the man that ran it back last time, but he is not going to this time. Good coverage and good placement. Pinned him along the sidelines. It's a lot harder to return it when you're stuck on the sidelines. You don't have a lot of area to go. So they'll start at the 45-yard line. And this, believe it or not, will be Southwestern's first possession Offensive possession <laughs> of the game. I think that was Brennan Lincoln um, in there on the tackle, and special team tackle. And Sam Atra is not out there on defense either. So we saw him on the kickoff team, not on offense or defense. So I don't know the story of that, but Atra is also the leading tackler for Fredonia. So if he's hurt or, or something's going wrong, he's got 31 tackles in two games. Carry by Walsh up the middle. Drives the pile forward for a couple. Walsh played a lot of quarterback last year for Southwestern. Uh, let's see, he's spotted out. It's a gain of about four, so it'll be at the 47. So second and six. It's like uh, 78 Ian Story, right? S Story is 79, I believe. 79, it was Ian. Motion here. Fumble. Fumble in the backfield. And the quarterback there, we didn't. That's Owen Hayes, the junior, playing quarterback um, for Southwestern this year. And he went to do the fake to Walsh, and the ball hit him in the leg and it knocked it loose. So that's a big air loss of five, six yards on that play. Luckily for Southwestern, Hayes was able to jump back on it. Based on the stats I'm seeing here, Owen Hayes, number seven. Five completions, 15 attempts, only about 31 yards so far. Yeah, the, the offensive yards, I mean, the leading rusher for Southwestern has, what, 51 yards on the season? Yeah. Yep. The less receiving rushing would be 55. So very pedestrian offensive numbers. Empty backfield here for Hayes. Looking to his left, throws it deep. He has a man wide open, and he overthrows Walsh. And that could have been a big game. Quinn would have there maybe to make the tackle. But that would have been an easy completion if Hayes hadn't throw, overthrown Walsh. What a break for the Hillbillies. And that brings up fourth and about 11. And I'm guessing, yeah, Walsh is going back to at least receive like he is going to punt it. Always got to be aware in special teams in Southwestern, as we've seen already, two special teams touchdowns. So Jamison Quinn, the only returner back for Fredonia. Very of the fake and Walsh is going to kick it nice punt driving Jamison Quinn all the way back to his own 15 Good where he fields it there gets by Get the first yardage. two guys Good and hit, oh, oh flag late on the flag. flag oh boy so let's see if we can let's see if we can see what that penalty might be Jackson we can roll that back while we have a minute so here's the punt 
Again, he gets by the first guy. Nice move. I'm looking maybe for a block in the back here somewhere. Yes, right yep, there on the, the sideline. Right Hit block. So that's going to pin Fredonia back even more. You can see that. It looks like it's blurry there, number wise. It looks like maybe 11. Number yeah. 11. Han, well, he tried to give credit for the touchdown. Now he will give him credit for the block in the back. That'll be a spot foul, 10 yards from the spot. So Fredonia will start back inside their own 20 on that one as they walk this. No, I guess not. Did they wave it off? Uh, they're going to move it now. Okay. They put it down to walk it off. All right, yep. So from the spot, swapping out the balls, special team ball versus Fredonia's offense. Wow, that was a lot of work to spot the ball 10 <laughs> yards back. But here, Fredoni is starting inside. Looks to be about their own 14-yard line. It's, it's always tough when your back's against the end zone. Yeah, I mean, the turnover here is devastating if you have to punt from back here. So they had one good play in offense so far, and that was a touchdown. Empty backfield here again. I still do not see Etzrat is not on the field, and here's White on the good run. QB. Keeper nice. runs over. Defender there and is forced out of bounds on first down. Good hard run by Davi White. Number 35, Matthew Strong Butterfield in for the stop. Looks like uh, Davi had a nice little shoulder into him. Yeah, good eight yard gain on first down. Now the playbook opens wide. Yes. For Coach Balvino. Second and two, you can run it for a first down, you can take a shot. And real tight press coverage here still by Southwestern. One deep safety. Corners are maybe seven yards off. Slot guys. And White's going to keep again. it again. Nothing there this time. And he might even lost a yard. All dependent. They give him forward progress here. No gain on the play at best. So we'll bring up third and short. Well, maybe they gave him a yard. Sticking with the empty backfield here. They're in about one, two yards to go. And if you're the Hillbillies, you I mean, we're still in the first quarter too, by the way, folks. It seems like we should be in the third after <laughs> all this action. Empty backfield. Looks like the middle linebacker might be coming, and he does. White carries it oh, once wow. again. Huge hole off the right side. Tackle made by 14 of Southwestern, Brody Larson but not before White on three straight carries gets the first down for Fredonia. Davi White again, putting his shoulder down right there as you can see. And Larson put a good hit on him yes, too. Yes, he did. Gullo in the backfield now, right behind White. Stacked receivers on both sides. Gullo gets the carry up the middle. Nice run nice driving nice forward. Run. Luca Gullo on the carry. That was a nice little change of pace. And Gullo and Atzrod could not be more opposite runners for Fredonia. You know, it's got a little fire and ice going on. Gullo's much smaller, shifty runner. And Atzrod, who does have speed, but he's a power one cut and go runner. So it's a nice combination. But again, we're not sure why Atzrod is not playing here in the first quarter anyway. Back to Gullo again, and he's gonna have a first down and more. Tackled by 24 of Southwestern, Gabe Tiger. I don't know if that's proper pronunciation, but <laughs> T-Y-G-E-R. I will go with Tiger. And another first down for Fredonia, back-to-back. -back, well, not back-to-back -back carries, but. No, he's definitely moving the ball right now. Once again, empty backfield with trips left. And once again, Davi White is going to keep it to the right side. Another Wide big hole. hole. Touchdown saving tackle by 14, Brody Larson. But great job by the right side of that line, led by Owen Rush over there at right tackle. About a 14 yard gain. And you see Rush kicking out his guy. You see Price in there. You see uh, 72, which is, which is Simon Price, Owen Rush, um, and others over there on that right side of the line. 76 is the right guard, Colin Kroll as well, sealing the inside off there, giving White those running lanes. 
Goes to goal this time, breaks to the outside. Nicely done there. Once again, Brody Larson on the tackle for Southwestern. So Fredoni's got a nice little drive going here on the ground, nothing special. Got an eight yard pickup for Gullo. They really sucked Walsh in on that. He had his back to the ball carrier as the end. And that is not how he wanted to do it. That's definitely giving up containment on that play. Almost getting caught up more in beating the guy that's blocking him than making a tackle. And that's Tyler Kuzdale at left tackle there. Empty backfield for White. And this time they're gonna go to the left and hasn't been as much room on the left on that no. QB draw. And there wasn't there either. So let's see where they spotted. It was only second and a long one. It looks it's gonna be third the, down yeah. in inches, third it looks short. like. Yeah. At least uh, they're looking. And yeah, they're gonna keep it at third down. Not asking for a measurement. Nice fair spot on that one. At least from our angle. Yeah, it's hard to tell forward progress exactly where he was on those plays up here. Gullo to White's right. And I'll go into the air here. Pass. Oh! Huge Take hit. Your helmet off. That's Brown on the catch for Fredonia. Kevin Brown. He's going to have to come off the field because yes. how was good. It looks like he's okay. But that's a monster hit. Uh, let's see. It's. Oh, that's helmet to helmet. Yes. Not sure why that wouldn't that be called. That should have been a flag. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I love the hit, but. It's helmet to helmet. It drove his helmet off the ground, but no flag. And now it's going to be fourth down. Obviously, it's in where we are about the 29-yard line. Fredoni's going to go for this on fourth and two. It was a loss of one on the play. Brown was able to catch that somehow. It's like they're calling timeout. And the officials are talking here. But, again, you got. I know it's hard full speed. But I, I that, preach this a lot. The officials have to protect these kids. That was a helmet hit, to, to head helmet head, yes. is a penalty at all levels. You get ejections for that at the higher levels. In high school, the officials don't call those things, and it's a real shame. White with empty backfields going to the, right out the middle. Easily got the first down. No surprise, there's no like hidden agenda here. What's Ferroni's gonna do in that empty backfield, but they're not able to stop them. Again, 2.34 to go, first quarter, 6.14 right now. Been an exciting first quarter of football. Ferroni is now knocking on the door. They can get close to the end zone here. Try to punch one in, try to get this game close. Quinn now in the backfield, little wildcat formation, and he's going to keep it. Still and got he's some got some running right Still up the middle, up the slicing and dicing. He's going to be close to the first down. Looks like they're going to mark it uh, just shy of the first down. About a nine-yard pickup for Quinn. 14, number 35. Strong Butterfield in on the tackle. Still sticking with this empty backfield here. White is such a force running. You spread out that defense, and he's going again. Spins Trends off of one, around. but he can't get away. And that'll draw the whistle. And let's see if there, yes, it's going to be a first down, first though. Down. It was only second and one. So it's going to be first and goal for the Hillbillies. First quarter winding down right now, 115. Yeah, finally. <laughs> it's, been a, it's been a long first quarter. <laughs> yeah. So here we go. Clock is running. Empty backfield. White's going oh. again. Oh, nice move Push there. And he and stops short of the end zone. But a real nice move, sidestepping the defender there. If we can see that in replay. Maybe not. No, but uh, either way, 
He made a real nice move, a little sidestep to the left, and then he did a real nice job accelerating after the cut for a nice gain on first and goal. It's going to be second and three, or sec first and second goal from the three. White's going to keep it again. And Cuts. He's got to be in. Still, Still going. driving in. Oh, they're, they're signaling a touchback. He, White must have fumbled the ball. And Southwestern comes up with it. Oh it's going to be covered it in their own end zone for the touchback. So another big turnover. There it is. Did he cross the plane? Uh, that's. No, nope. the ball is ball out. out. The ball is definitely out. Oh. He started to lose it earlier. The nice job by 27. That's the, um, Bohan Wendell, I believe. Is that the same one that returned the kickoff as well, right? 27? Wendell for Southwestern? Uh, it's on my special teams here. But anyway, yes. either way, he did recover that fumble. Strong Butterfield. Oh, Butterfield 35. had yep. the, the return. So another big turnover, nice stop by Southwestern. And that, that was a great drive by Fredonia. <laughs> 22 seconds left in the first quarter. Fredonia, if, you, if you're just tuning in, was driving the ball right up to the red I zone. I mean, it was a great drive. They great started drive. inside their 20, and, and it was really all rushing, too. Motion here. He hands it off to Walsh. He makes and a nice cut, free. and it's going to be a race between Walsh and Quinn. And not many people are going to be able to beat Quinn, but a huge gain on first down after the turnover. But Walsh, is he all right? A little slow to get up. He grabbed his leg right away, and he is limping. And that would be a huge loss for Southwestern. If he's not able, he's pushing the sideline that he's all right. But what a hole off the left-hand side, and Walsh hit it hard. Touchdown saving tackle by Quinn. In Southwestern right now trying to capitalize on the turnover in the end zone. Big run. As you can see Quinn coming up, number five coming up right here. Makes the last second tackle. Yeah, and I mean, nothing dirty. And it was going to be first and goal. He just, he, you know, he went low, hit the legs. It might even landed on um, Walsh's legs making that tackle, which, you know, you can get twisted and injured real easy there. But Walsh does stay in. He's the deep back here. You have Owen Hayes at quarterback. Motion going right back to Walsh. Same play. Stop this time after a gain of about one or two. Looks like Colin Kroll, 76, was in on the tackle there. So it's going to be second goal. And that will bring us to the end of the first quarter with the score Southwestern 14, Fredonia 6. And there's a good <laughs> shot of Walsh. Pretty tired after the long run for the big man. I, you know, as for Fredonia, I mean, for, for a minute there, I was feeling really good. I was feeling like they were going to get in that end zone, be able to punch it in. Great, great drive by Fredonia, though. You know, eight yards, eight yards, 14 yards, one, five, one. Gets right up to the end zone, plus the about a 60 yard touchdown from Tim Field for Fredonia in the first quarter, but then Southwestern with their two special teams. Yeah, plays opening kickoff and the block punt, and there we are, Rob, on the screen. Hello, everyone. Um, but yeah, it's not a boring first quarter by any means, but I'll tell you, none of these Fredonia games so far have been boring. It was action-packed, same type of thing, especially in the first half against Randolph. Great seesaw affair. Fredonia came out early. South or Randolph came powering back. Um, and a lot of action in the second half as well. Last week, 46-40, the whole game was action. It was touchdown after touchdown by both teams. And you had defensive touchdowns in that game as well. So a lot of creative ways these high school teams are finding a score this season so far. So if you're Fredonia, second quarter, what do you do? Yeah, you just keep playing here. Obviously, the first thing you want to do is try to stop here. We know who's can kick a field goal. He already has two on the season, and we saw his leg uh, distance is not a problem from here. But Southwestern, if, to stay ahead of this offense, we see how it can score. We can see how it can throw deep. It can run. They're going to have to score points. They haven't done it all year offensively. They still do not have an offensive touchdown. So this is real important for the Trojans to be able to punch this in and get that and break that ice there, that barrier, get the hump off their back and get in a touchdown. So you, again, it's single back, Jamison Walsh behind Hayes under center, motion again, right back to Walsh, and nothing there, 58. I believe that's Kada. Um, 
Yeah, Aiden Kata, the sophomore in there, making a big, big tackle on Walsh, bringing up third and goal. We have not seen a lot of Kata um, so far this season. I think it's Kata. Kata. <laughs> Can Southwestern knocking on the door right now. Fredonia's really got to stop any of those runs coming up the middle. That seems where uh, the Trojans have really had some good production on offense is coming right up the middle. Yeah, it's still third and goal um, from the six. Same formation here. Pro set, motion from the wide receiver, and they flip it to the receiver on the jet sweep. He has the edge, and he's in for the touchdown. Again, that's the first offensive touchdown, not only of the game for the Trojans, but the season, it is game three, and that is a remarkable um, to think about for this the history of Southwestern football. That was 18. Delton. Declan, Declan, Declan Kennedy, Kennedy, the younger brother of former star Aiden Kennedy of the Trojans, who had a lot of success over the years against the Hillbillies. Who's back for the extra point? And that's a really big touchdown if you're a Trojan fan. And the kick is up and into the woods, I believe. Yes, out of the stadium. Good luck getting that one back. Maybe the deer or woodchucks will bring it back <laughs> later on. Maybe about Wednesday we'll see them carrying the ball I have out. a game here tomorrow night, so if so I see it out here, I'll know yeah. why. If they're not bringing the football on it, they're bringing other things on the field for these kids <laughs> to fall into. Yes, they, have that they do. Other little nuggets. <laughs> There's a little bit of a nature preserve out here at the <laughs> Orange Bowl. <laughs> Again, Fredonia, 11 minutes left in, this, in the first half. Fredonia's got to find a way to rally back now, keep that offensive production going, and punch that ball into the end zone. Defense definitely needs to start looking at containing on the inside because it seems like they're just kind of getting pummeled. But that right there, the jet sweep, they yeah. got it in there. Yeah, I mean... Southwesters used the Fredonia motions against them the whole game for before even kickoff. They drew that 15-yard penalty. So Coach Burkholder really can't be much happier of how this game has gone. They gave up one long pass. Um, you know, it was a great throw and catch and run by field. Um, but other than that, physically, they were able to, I think Fredonia is kind of winning the line of scrimmage battle, but not on the scoreboard. It's 21 to 6. It, again, it's the little mistakes that can yeah, cost everything. Uh, absolutely. So be w very nervous about who's here. One guy back once again, and that's Gullo. Average kickoff starting uh, field position on the kickoff for Fredonia is about the 20 and a half yard line. They had one on the 20 and a touchback and one at the 21. And let's see where who's does here. And he kicks it kicks deep, deep, right down the middle. A little surprised by that, giving Gullo a chance to return. He gets Break by three. two or three guys. Oh, almost broke that. That's honestly a great return by Luca Gullo. And I, I don't love the choice there in that kickoff if you're Southwestern. Why are you kicking a high to your one deep man and allowing him to return that? Kick it to one side or the other. And it, it costs some yards. There's that great close up, great camera work by our crew. And a real nice uh, return by Gullo. And that's Coach Johnson down there, Coach and Wub, special teams coach. And it looks Sammy Atzrot's in. So I'm guessing it was a first quarter thing. Not sure the story there. But look for a dose of Atzrot now and his power running against this Southwestern offense. And here it comes, first carry right is to Etra. But Southwestern, here. number 68 right away. Great play coming from Tavio Hoos. The Hoos are having a great game, a sophomore. Breaks through the defense, offensive line and makes a nice tackle for no gain. Tavio Hoos had a sack earlier. Picked up another tackle right there. All right, let's see. So Atra is right back out of the game. Gullo is in. Just not sure. I, I'm very interested. I'm going to find out the story at halftime, what's going on um, there. 
Now, Azrat ran quite a bit last week, right? Uh, leading rusher of the team. He had 170 yards and four touchdowns. Pass here to Quinn. He's got it. Is he in bounds? No, 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 he's calling him out. out of bounds. Quinn's pleading his case. Let's see the replay, replay here. Here we go. Okay, so it was, a, he's pinned on the sideline. You only have to get one foot in. Oh, we can't, we can't quite see, see it. it. I mean, it's a great catch. Beautiful catch, beautiful catch. I, it's, it, from I our angle too, too it's yeah. too hard to see. Yeah, you have the guys on the sideline and coaches on the sideline, but that was a really nicely thrown ball. And a great job by Jamison Quinn going up and catching at the high point. As a receiver, you don't wait for it to come down to you. He went up and got it. And uh, I guess we'll never know for sure, at least from the camera angle we have, whether he nope. got his foot in. Maybe Ashley Brown, our team photographer, has done a great job. She was right there, so maybe she got a shot. Um, but it doesn't matter now. No it's third review. long. <laughs> yeah. Gullo's still in, in the backfield. White drops back to throw once again. Oh. He goes to run, it slips right away, oh. and he can't get away from Walsh. Number eight, Jamison Walsh, again having another a, a day. Earlier had a sack. He gets credit for the tackle right there. Officials are talking, I'm not sure what. Uh, on the back side here, um, Owen Rush had a pancake block against that same 68. Calvin um, or T Hoos, and they mixed it up a little bit. No flag was called. There was a lot of kicking and accusations of kicking. Oh, we do have a defensive a holding penalty. Okay. I didn't see the flag anywhere, and that is going to be a Fredonia first down after that penalty, it looks like. That's the, I believe, first penalty on Southwestern for the first half so far. I mean, really... There hasn't been too many flags in general. We had a no, pregame pre and a block in the back. And now a holding penalty on Southwestern. So and I guess it's not an automatic first song because officials are looking at the chains. But with fourth and inches, you got to think Fredonia might try to go for it here either way if they don't get the first. They're lining I didn't up see a on flag the ball. Out there when no, this I never saw the flag anywhere. I saw officials talking, but I never noticed the flag. So it is, oh, okay, no, it's a replay down because of defensive penalty. So it's not going to be fourth down. Third and one. Yep, so third and one now. So that makes sense. Replay the down after the penalty. So now Fredonia is third and short after having third and long. That's a big penalty against Southwestern. Gives it to Jamison Quinn on the carry, and he's going to have the Fredonia first down. Quinn so far about 14, 12 yards carrying for the first half. White and Quinn behind him, and Quinn gets the ball again, cuts to the left, a little shake and bake, but not a lot there. He's going to be driven back, probably gain of three to four yards, depending on the spot. It'll be second at about six. We'll give him four yards on that one. So four yards on first down is always a good thing if you're an offensive coach. Again, Fredonia mustering up a pretty good drive right now. They're at the past the midfield mark. Back to the empty backfield. Guess what we might see here? And we do. And this time Southwestern was not fooled either. If anything, if they give him the line of scrimmage, I think that he's even somewhat of a generous spot. Um, but no gain on the play. Jackie Nyan on the tackle. Butterfield as well that was, helping yeah, out that tackle. Yeah, that was a good job there beating Looks like Kroll was trying, got through Kroll there on the back side. Made a nice tackle. So third down here, ball at the 46 yard line of the Trojans. Quinn still in the backfield, Quinn's gonna, no, White pulls oh, it. He pulled it. Oh, the ball's no. on the loose again. And it's gonna be scooped up by number 52, has a convoy of blockers. 
He cuts back and he is gonna go all the way. Another huge turnover for Fredonia. That is, that, that's, was that 58? No, uh, number 52, 52, Braden Potter. Thank you. De S yeah, defense line, sophomore, scooped, scooped and, and ran. I mean, ran a great job blocking down the field. Looks like uh, I'm back on that play. Uh, number two, da uh, Davian, Davian White. Da Davian White, yeah. Yeah, he looked like he was holding his hand. Yeah, he's he been gripping it a few yeah. times too. It's a help. That was a good play by a defender. He put the body right on the ball, forcing that fumble. But I mean, Davi White is his first year starting at quarterback. We got Hoos in here um, for the extra point, looking to go up 28 to six here. Um, and he's, he's done a great job, and he's had a lot of great runs. He's had a lot of great throws, but he's also had a lot of big turnovers. Yes, turnovers. And, yes. and, and it's really cost this team two pick sixes last week. And again, they're not in the game without the things he's done well. He's played well tonight, but he had the fumble right before the score. Uh, their last score ended up being a touchback, and a Southwestern led to a Southwestern touchdown, driving 80 yards for the score after a long Walsh run. And there, Fredonia's also driving. If that wasn't a first, I believe that would have been a first down on that carry in Southwestern territory. Coughs the ball up, touchdown the other way. So we, of the three Southwestern touchdowns, or four Southwestern touchdowns, two special teams, one defense, one offense. And that is a good way to lose a game if you're Fredonia giving up those kind of scoring plays and making those kind of mistakes. Those mistakes will cost you, you know, you saw it in the NFL last week. It happened week one in the NFL. A lot of big teams, especially the Buffalo Bills, turnovers will cost a game. Yes, and, and it's not just turnovers. It's the result in the timing of the turnovers, right? A lot of good offenses and the take chances, they're going to have some turnovers. But when you... It's the timing of them. What's a good time to take a chance and not? I mean, if you throw 40, 50 times a game, you might have a pick, but right. it, you can't have so many. You can't have them as you're driving down the field. You can't have them as you're about to go in the end zone. Um, those are big difference makers. Seven thirteen left in the second half. Right now, Southwestern up 28 for only six. Number 13, who's back to kick? And let's see, I wouldn't expect them to kick it right to Gullo again. I really wouldn't. I, I don't know if that was a mistake last time, but it, it just didn't seem to make a lot of sense when you have a kicker like Hoos. And now it's a nope. squib kick. It goes off Glavy, and Gullo's able Scoops to scoop it up. it up right around the 20, trying to get Got to the outside. To and great containment there by the Southwestern special teams. Uh, Gullo was running east and west more than north and south because he had nowhere to go. Great coverage there. Great execution by Southwestern special teams. Again, Southwestern special teams is having a good night so far. Yeah. Um. And, and watching that replay there, you saw a couple special team blockers of Fredonia turn and look back at Gullo. And that's the last thing you want to do if you're blocking young players out there. You don't look for your runner. You look for a guy to block. And when you turn around and look, the special team defenders get right by you, defenders, whoever it may be, and usually make the tackle. White, White takes the snap. It was Gullo in the background, but room. White keeps it. Oh, oh, he's just tripped up there by Jamison Walsh. It looked like he was going to have some room. And, you know, for a big man and a power runner like White, he can really accelerate much quicker. He plays faster. And you can see that here. But look at that ball loose. You can see space in it. It's not tight on his body. Right. You know, you got to keep it high and tight. And, and coaches have to coach him up and work on that with White as this season goes on. Again, lack of experience. He played almost tired linebacker. His first year back in football last year and had a great season at linebacker, had limited snaps on offense. Um, timeout here, looks like Fredonia 624 left in the first half. Southwestern 28, Fredonia six. Big shock here in the Orange Bowl. 
and not a lot of Christmas presents are being no. opened or shared by this Fredonia crowd. I've never seen it this quiet on a Southwestern game. Yeah. Um, you, I don't know what to say right now. I mean, let's talk. Let's recap the first first half so far. Go. Special teams, uh, run back for a touchdown. Special teams, Southwestern punt block. Touchdown. Fredon touchdown. Fredonia, nice nice catch by Field, 60 yard TD, and then. The fumble in the end zone costing Fredonia, uh, you know, a chance to score another touchdown. Which Southwestern have, capitalizes yeah. on it, gets another touchdown there, and then the fumble. Scoop and score. Scoop, scoop and score. I mean, they, yeah. again. And that, and that fumble, just think about it. The, guy, the score is 14-6. to Fredonia is about to go in the end zone again. Possibly tie it up with a two-point conversion. Fumbles. There, that's that key point. That's a... 14 yes. point turnaround right there in the game and, and give credit to Walsh and the Southwestern offensive line cover that big run and then the jet sweep around the edge for the touchdown uh, but that's a couple really three big plays or difference maker of course the fumble scoop and score yep um, you don't have to say much more in good play there Atra is still not in the game offensively little bunts formation here pitch out to Walsh or excuse me Quinn and what a fantastic tackle there by 68, have a game, young man. That's Hoos once again, the sophomore. He's going to be a dandy for the Trojans. Again, Hoos, uh, you know, a sack, two tackles, two big tackles. Third and 11 right now. And yeah, that was a big loss in that play. You know, it's one of those, uh, let's get this ball moved upfield and let's try to get at least to halftime and regroup. Yeah. Well, they, they want to get a score in, and they will get the ball first in the second half. So you want to get it within a touchdown or two for Hillbillies for half. But you gotta get a first down here. White's looking deep, he's under pressure oh. and he's gonna be sacked again by 73. And honestly, to me, that was a mistake by White. There was no pressure in the middle of the packet, if we can see. See, there's no one around him, but now he decides to run around the edge and Rush had that guy blocked. There was no pressure there. And his, he, his receivers were yeah. open on the side here. On the that's side. that's that's the the heart beating a little too fast right now for White in this intense game, and, and that's a mistake. You see that mistake, all levels. It's not you know it's not just Davi White. We're not picking on Davi White here, uh, but he rushed that. He did not have to leave the pocket. If anything, he could have stepped up, but there was no pressure on him. He had time. Bryce Bacher in the punt, all standing about his own five yard line. Walsh and Larson back oh, for short punt. And a short high punt. Uh, depending on the mark, it looks like it'll be right around the 40. 40. No, they're out to 45. Where, uh, what is he doing? He's marching know. back now. <laughs> I, <laughs> right around I'm the confused. 40. Well, he <laughs> picked it one. up from there, walked <laughs> back to the 45, then marched it back. It was, I all right. I don't, maybe that's the proper procedure, but it looks silly. Where was his beanbag? <laughs> yeah, right right at the 40. So great field position here. And now you're Southwestern. You're smelling blood. You can go up 38 to 6 here with a score um, going into halftime. And nobody would have suspected no. that. And Southwestern came here. They were hungry. Hayes gives it to Walsh up the middle. And he's met hard by Kata, but. Walsh kind of fell forward. That was a nice tackle by the sophomore and a bigger running back there filling that hole. I didn't think he's going to be able to hang on, but that's a nice job by uh, the sophomore. And he's uh, you know, really filling the void here by um, Atzrot playing linebacker there in the middle. We've seen Ian Story play some middle linebacker in previous games. He's back on the defensive line. And Kata's in there along with Davi White. And then you have... Glavy in fields as the outside linebackers for the Hillbilly defense. Larson under center, two backs this time. Motion to the right, and Flags there's a pre-snap flag. You gotta assume that's gonna be on the offense. And it is a false start against the Trojans, and that's that's a big mistake. You don't, you're driving, you know, it's not your second and seven, which isn't terrible. Now you're second and 12. Price coming on for and you can tell this Fredonia team is really missing Sammy Atzrot right now. 
Uh, been the best by far all around player on this team, leading the team in tackles and rushing. And he has one carry. I don't know if he's played any defensive snaps at all. Maybe one offensive snap this game. Motion to the right, gives it to Walsh up the right side, has got Lots some room. room. And he is going to be close to the first down. Nope, stopped around the 34-yard line. So he'll bring up third down, but that's a big run by Walsh there. He's having a real nice game. Already having more yards than they had in the first two games rushing tonight against this Hillbilly defense. This is the first carrier for Walsh, it looks like, tonight, about an eight-yard pickup. It's not his first carry. It's not his first carry? No, he has the long, he's had most of the carries. Has he? Yes. Uh, including that real long one. That was him? Yes. Okay. Yep, he's been the primary back this game. Um, but anyway, I mean, already, I mean, the leading rusher going into this game in two games had 55 yards for Southwestern. So nice uh, adjustment made. Oh, ball's on the turf. And Larson's able to blow the whistle, folks. Larson was on the ground with the ball and no whistle. It's, Good way to get a player hurt, but another mistake here. It's going to be on fourth down. So you had a false start and a So like he a bumbled fumble. on the snap. Yep. And Bryce Bacher had a chance. And good job by Larson getting that ball away from him. Someone needs to teach him to go into fetal position, though. It's a good <laughs> way to get hurt, standing on your knees like that, and someone jumps on your back. So here's a huge down, 2-11. Clock's running. It's going to be under two minutes left in the first half time they snap the ball. Um... The Southwestern, they can pick up this first down and chance to take the lead. Now, if you're the Hillbillies, you got to stop it here and get a chance to score uh, before the half, get it within two touchdowns. And now Southwestern let the clock run down as much as they could. Great job by Coach Burkholder and a key team timeout. Wants to talk about this fourth down play. He understands the importance of it. So if you're Southwestern, what do you do on a fourth down play like this with 150 left? in the first half. Yeah, you're, you're going to have to, it's going to be hard just to hand that off tackle to Walsh on this fourth and six or seven yards that they have coming up here. You're going to, we saw him do the jet sweep to the outside. Or do you see, Maybe. A, do you see a strike to the corner? Yeah, you could definitely, you know, post pass. There's a lot, I mean, there's a lot of things you can do, but I don't think you can just hand it off to Walsh off tackle here and a straight run play and expect him to get six to seven yards on fourth down. And that's what they're talking about. They're setting up something. The timeout kind of tells you even more. They're not just handing it off the walls, not to mention the situation would be the best call. Of course, if you convert it, you look like a genius. But, you know, that's easy armchair quarterback there. So I don't know. We haven't seen too many pass attempts by Southwestern. We saw one long pass. Walsh out of the backfield just overthrown him. Um, I don't remember a completion, Rob. Do you have any records of a completion by Southwestern today? I have, I, let's see here. Uh, Southwestern, got kick returns, uh, offensive yeah. TD. Or I don't the remember first offensive a completed TD was pass. Uh, uh, Delkin? No, no, I'm talking just passing. Passing, yeah, yeah, I have yeah, not. No. I have not seen any error game. They, they, I know they had the one long pass to Walt. Now Walsh is, oh, he's just psyching himself up here. He goes way back and now he's walking. Oh, they're gonna punt? No, they're going to punt here and, and not go for it. And trying to pin the hillbilly back. Don't be surprised of any sort of fake I was either. Fake. No, they do a straight punt, and it's not a good one. I don't know. So that's that a, about the 18-yard line? Yeah, that, Bryce Bacher pressured him a little bit, but that is not a good punt. And uh, to me, I get it. That's a kind of conservative call. And here's the replay. Um, I... I'm going for blood here. I want to try to win this game. Fredoni still have a long way to go, but it shows you how nervous they are about this Fredoni offense, knowing that they can score quickly. So, I mean, Burkos, maybe the one question, it's easy for me to question now after the bad punt, um, but I think I might have gone for it there, but it also tells me he doesn't have a lot of confidence in his own offense. <laughs> I mean, uh, fourth, you know, fourth and seven, seven you know, uh, Definitely should have at least moved the ball up more. They could have probably gained some more yards running. Then again, you know when you got when you got a big lead like this, there is some room to work with. Yeah, I, I mean, there's definitely an argument. Old school football, you punt there all day. Modern day football, I'm not so sure. But let's see if Fredoni can make them pay. Empty backfield to White. White quick throw out to Walt or Quinn, 
It's not a good throw. Quinn tries to make a diving catch. He can't. So it'll be second down and 10. It does stop the clock um, for Fredonia. Let's see here. Coach Balvino is calling her in the play from the sideline. Backfield stays empty. Traditionally, too, when Fredonia went empty backfield, Southwestern will bring the house. You're not seeing that quite as much, but they are getting good pressure and get some key sacks on White. Now they're calling the keeper to White, which again, now the clock's going to run. It's going to be third and long. And that also shows me there's a little nervousness to throw it here or take too many chances with White at quarterback on that call. Now the clock's still running, 120, third and long. And this is not a traditional offense that we've seen out of Fredoni the last couple of years. The ball would have been slinging in the air with Whitfield and then uh, Fry at quarterback. So they're just going to probably bleed, to try to bleed as much of the clock yeah, down to go to halftime. That's exactly what they're doing. And they're down by three touchdowns here. That pick six at the end of the first half last week, I bet, is in Coach Paulino's mind. But you're down 28 to six here. A little different scenario. And now timeout called by Ferroni is going to call timeout after running the clock all the way down to 46 seconds left in the half. Hi. <laughs> you see a lot of, uh, to me, nerves almost between the two coaches with these calls. You know, yeah, it's yes. just not a lot of confidence in what they're drawing up. And these two offenses for years have been absolute powerhouses. And neither team, neither coach is showing great confidence in their offense right now. Now, defensively, Southwestern seems to be playing they, pretty good. They, uh, I mean, they're coming up with big plays when they need. It's kind of like bend but don't break. Fredoni's offense has put up quite a few yards on the day for only having six points if we looked at the first half yardage. But I don't know. This is not what we expected um, by any means. I don't think anyone expected this tonight after for Southwestern scoring a total of six points in the first two games. Fredonia scoring 41 and 40 in their two <laughs> first games, and they're down six to 28. So, and and Fredonia's played against two good teams. Uh, you're playing Randolph, a state powerhouse for years, and then I'll tell you what, the Casadega, Maple Grove, Faulkner, their new nickname mascot is the Herd this year. I've heard. It, oh <laughs> my God, that's a bad dad joke. That's a very bad dad joke. Your boy, or your daughter, and my son daughter would be she's, so embarrassed. She's hiding right now. now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Don't let her hear that on a replay. Um, and a very good team. They've come out with two big wins for them so far, and kind of seem like the favorite to win the C South so far. I mean, only two games, three games. Now it's third game of the season. But here we go. Gullows in the backfield to White's right. The third and six, 46 seconds left. And you almost expect to know he is going to throw it now. And again, he's leaving that pocket early. There's no, the ball is ball loose. Is loose again. They're going to call it down. But he's he's just he's rushing. The pocket right. is there. He's not trusting oh, that's his a big recovery there. It makes, looks like Han came up with it. And here it is in the replay. Uh, there's no there's no pressure. He's fine. Yes, he he's, and he's leaving that pocket. And the and the linemen are like, guy, we're not blocking out there. We're blocking right. in here. It's almost like he doesn't trust his pocket, or yeah, feels like it's yeah. collapsing around him when but it's again, actually standing up. Yes, that that's an inexperienced quarterback out there. And it's going to be fourth and long. Twenty seconds left. Fredonia looks like called their final timeout of the half because now they have to execute a punt and stop the punt from coming back. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> and you know. One punt was blocked, and the other one is really short um, so far by Fredonia. And there's Coach Sherlock, Jordan Sherlock talking to Davi. And, he, he, and you can see he's upset. And I, and I get he's a great young man. He's had a great athletic career. Uh, quarterback position's pretty hard to play. And uh, he's learning on the fly. You know, he has very little um, experience. And that's not his fault. There's nothing against him. It's just reality. Officials are putting back to 25 seconds on the clock. Uh, right away, you guys can see that. The officials came over to the press box here um, and said put 25 seconds on the clock. 
Um, so good job by them trying to get that right. But this is a key punt <laughs> at the end of the first half. You have to execute the punt here. The last thing you can do is give Southwestern another, another touchdown. touchdown. <laughs> Southwestern coming back onto the field. 25 seconds left. Southwestern right now 28. Fredonia 6. Fourth and 12. Ball's on about the 18 yard line. Let's see what Fredonia does here in the last 25 Bryce seconds. Bryce Bacher, and again, they're bringing the house. They have no one back to return this, just like we saw in that opening punt that they did block. Let's see if we made any special, Fredonia made any special team adjustments. Low snap. And it's and a real low, still rolling. terrible punt. Luckily, it looks like one of my golf shots down the middle <laughs> of the fairway when I miss hit it. And go, oh, don't worry, that'll, you'll be okay with that, as my friends always try to encourage me. And uh, it doesn't usually help because I'm swearing at that point. And I have witnessed it. So. <laughs> Coach LaDuke is in front of me, and he's seen it <laughs> laughing hysterically at me right now. Because he's been one of those people patting me on the back, trying to encourage me on the on the course. The personality in, in me does not work well with golf, although I've calmed down a lot over the years and just laugh yeah, at myself. Yeah. I think I have more of a temper than you do. But, yes, you do. <laughs> but I will say, I hope Jay Beers is listening, which I know I'm not. I did beat him in the playoffs this year. <laughs> that, it, you know, I, I, that makes me laugh, too. <laughs> So 16 seconds left here in the first half. We see shotgun, which I don't remember seeing this out of Southwestern. Um, spreading and twins on both sides and the Larson is gonna throw the ball. He's going deep, two defenders there. And Southwestern receiver is able to come up with it. He's still on his feet. He's finally knocked off his feet about the three yard line. And but there is a flag way back at the line of scrimmage that's either gonna be holding or a late hit in the quarterback. There's only one of two, but what a play either way that happened by Brody Larson. Um, and it looks like they're gonna be pulling it back. Uh, the officials are wow. standing back by the flag. I'm guessing that might have been holding. Um, but what a job by Larson to go up and get that from Field and Quinn, two of the top receivers um, of Fredonia. And it is going to come back. It's got a 35 yard pass. The ball's still being spotted. I don't know why it's at the 11. He was way down to, unless they're saying he touched his knee sooner. What do we got? Officials are still talking. If it's a holding call, it's a holding call. Not sure what there is to discuss. Unless there's two. And then it's just offsetting. Right. <laughs> Unless it's both on, two on Southwestern, and then Fredoni would have the choice which one they want, because you know they're not gonna decline both no, of no. them. But again, I guess it's better to talk and get it right. Especially a big play here. Again, officials still talking about yeah, this. Yeah, this is a long talk for, this is getting <laughs> that scary territory where like last year we Let's have see, a right face here. mask. There's no oh, late hit he there. He pushed. Unless they're, he yeah, him he's into the getting, queue, so uh, yeah, but still, I don't not, think that's, that's not even, a penalty, no. Yeah, the line, Bacher gets pushed into the quarterback. Um, but if that's roughing the passer, then it'd be on Fredonia either way. And you, you know they're, if anything, I think you might get put on at the end of the catch there, yards I, yeah. put on. But what a catch, I gotta go back, Larson there. What a job going up and getting that ball. It's one of the best catches I've seen. And he stays on his feet, too. Okay, it's holding on the offense. Now let's see if the... Last year we had a face mask on our running back. Then he fumbled it. And Southwestern recovered it. They marked off five yards from Southwestern's recovery and gave the ball to Southwestern at the end of the game. Very questionable call. Yes, they better not yes. pull something like this where Southwestern still gets the ball down in first and goal. But what's interesting right now is we st uh, they call the holding penalty. Both officials are talking to the both coaches. Yeah, I, I don't understand. Um, I'd love to hear the conversation. You're right, though. Um, Coach Sherlock and Coach Burkholder are, are talking to the officials for an explanation. 
Maybe they want to know why it's not roughing the passer. It's the only thing I can think of, but he was, uh, by replay. He was engaged in a block. He was, pu yeah, pushed into him, and it wasn't even that late, and it was not a malicious hit by any means. It looks like Walsh is going to go get his ball. <laughs> you don't see that often either in no. a high school game. The, the star <laughs> running back going and get the ball. I'll get it for you. Yeah. Don't worry about it. Instead of the officials. <laughs> <laughs> so they spot it back. Yeah, at it, about the 50, 49, or yeah, 49 that's yard a, line. A holding's a 10 yard from right. the, and, and at this point, unless you just throw it up again, if, if you're you southwest. you kneel on it, you just go to ha half time. Yeah, I think, and it looks like they're the in. The clock is running. Oh, oh no. no, he's winding Oh, he's, he's winding, winding to run the clock. the clock. And that will go to the yeah, half. Yeah, and, and they are going to take a knee. I think that's the right thing to do. And that brings us to the end of a wild, wild first half. Southwestern up 28 to six over Fredonia. Um, so I think what we're gonna do now, Rob, is we'll take a break um, and try to gather up some stats, see if we can get any from Southwestern. I know we'll be able to get some from Fredonia. I'll try to talk to the coaches a little bit to find out what's going on with Atzrot and, yes, and what that yes. discussion was at the end of the half with too. With the officials. Um, there, so with that, we'll be back for a end of the half, uh, halftime show and get you the second half. On July 3rd of this year, Don Reinhardt died in a car crash at the age of 78. His death sent shockwaves throughout Chautauqua County and beyond. The four-time world powerlifting champion, the 1979 world's strongest man, the holder of 51 powerlifting records and an inductee of eight halls of fame, including the Chautauqua Sports Hall of Fame. Don was a legend in the sports history of his home county. Reinhardt was also a larger than life figure to thousands of Chautauqua County school children who were mesmerized by his feats of strength and his equally powerful motivational messages delivered during his 25-year tenure as the director of Chautauqua County's Youth Bureau. As a tribute to Big Don, who was a 1963 graduate of Fredonia High School and a proud hillbilly, the banner that you see in front of you was created and will hang permanently in the Fredonia High School Gymnasium. I'd like to thank the Fredonia Athletic Department, Greg Lauer, Alex Conti, Nick Bertrando, Charlie LaDuca, Ross Conti and Kelly DeFonzo for their effort for their efforts in honoring Chautauqua County's gentle giant Don Reinhout.
My name is Ross Conti, and I'm proud to say that I was a good friend of Don Reinhardt, which is not much of a distinction because Don's friends numbered in the thousands. Don's piece of strength are legendary, but even more legendary is the fact that this man was the gentlest of giants and the best of friends. His legacy will never be forgotten in gyms all across the country. I'm proud to say that he was a longtime member of Darwin's Health Club, where he influenced hundreds of people with his, not only history of exploits, but his outstanding and outsized personality. Don was truly a gentle giant who befriended everybody and was an inspiration to all. He was a great man who graced us with his presence and we are going to miss him muchly in future years. Don will always be remembered in our facility with a memorial wall that we have honoring him. And he will continue to be an influence to many young people and old alike who are inspired just to be in his presence. We will miss you forever, Don, and we will be very proud to look up at the wall in Fredonia and see you in a place of honor next to a, another outstanding Fredonia resident, Jen Sir, who is also a world champion and world record holder. Don will be in a special place in our hearts and on the wall forever. Thank you very much.
question. I don't like off the field. Um, I also did get an update on Sam Etra. And uh, if you did watch last week's game, he, even though he had 171 yards rushing and four touchdowns, he did hurt his shoulder and he's just not able to go. He wasn't able to practice all week. Uh, they tried it out today and he just can't do it right now. Uh, so that's obviously a huge loss for uh, Fredonia, an offensive leading rusher, uh, defensive leader. Uh, 20 sacks last year. He's all Western New York. I mean, an absolute phenomenal football player. It's a real talent to be missing. But honestly, there's a lot more reasons why Fredonia is down. And we also do have, unfortunately, I don't have any Southwestern stats. Um, but we do have, if Rob, if you're ready to read some of those off. Um, yeah, Donnie so White uh, right now. Fredonia stats. Fredonia stats, four attempts, only two completions, but 83 yards. Um, Sam Azrat. Uh, looks like uh, one rush, no yardage. And uh, Davian White had 14 rushes for 48 yards. Jameson Quinn, four rushes for 14 yards. Luca Gullo, three rushes for 22 yards. Uh, Kevin Brown, one reception, no yardage. And then Tim Field with a great 83-yard touchdown. Yeah, the lone offensive highlight really um, but the, the story of the game is, is really been turnovers and big plays. If you think of uh, all-purpose yards, I'm willing to bet Fredoni has just as many as Southwestern. They, they have had longer drives. Um, they just have had key turnovers. And Southwestern has capitalized in every mistake as you're seeing some of the, the highlights um, on the screen right now from the first half. Um, and here is uh, the big run by Jamison Walsh for Quinn made that touchdown saving tackle, uh, but that was right after 
a fumble into the end zone uh, by White, which would have been the score. Here's the fumble. So those plays back to back really, really was a game changer. Fredonia was about to tie the game up or at least we come in with one point or two points depending on the conversion. Here's a nice pass to Tim Field who almost drops, he was able to hold on, but that was a perfectly thrown ball by Davi White. And that's the one lone big play by Fredonia. And you had special team kickoff return. Here it is right now right. on cue, right? I mean, this was the opening kickoff after, you know. Don't forget the penalty that set this back. I, I mean, was it, about to say, yeah, and there's a nice block there by Walsh. Um, but that was after, and that's a great point, Rob, after the warm-up penalty that the Fredonia players took, mouthing off to Southwestern players. I know Southwestern players are probably talking too, but something was said above and beyond by a Fredonia <laughs> Enough player. Enough to see a yellow player. flag come out before the coin toss. And, and, and that <laughs> honestly set the tone, because right for, you know, you're all hyped up and then you're getting screamed at your coaches for making a foolish, and, and it was, I'll frankly say, it was a stupid mistake to start the game. Yeah. And you go high to low and boom, you got punched in the mouth, kickoff return, three and out, punt block, you're down 14 nothing before you know it in this game. And then they came, we are coming back, 14-6. Didn't convert a two-point conversion because they took another silly penalty after they scored, making them go for two. Didn't get it. Nope. So there's two huge penalties right there, right? And then they drive down, they get a stop, driving down the field, about to score with a chance to tie the game, fumble, fumble in the end zone. And then it was all Southwestern. Their only offensive touchdown of the season, and then another defensive touchdown on another fumble, scoop and score by Southwestern. So that's the tail of the tape. That's the bad news. The good news is Fredoni gets the ball to start the second half. Um, and they got a chance to go down the field. They've shown the ability to score. They have. They've shown the ability to move the ball. They're averaging over 40 points a season. They can score a lot quickly, but they got to get something going here and put some doubt in Southwestern. And remember, Rob, I said before the game, the last three contests, Fredonia got way up and Southwestern came pouring back into the game too. So you can see the opposite happen tonight, but it's got to start with this first possession and we got, here we are. Hoos is about to kick it off. Luca Gullo, the lone deep man, and he kicks a low line drive. It's going to be feeling up by Han, and Han's going to get it out to right around the 40 yard line. Just shy, probably about the 38. Good field position. I think this might be the best field position Fredonia yeah, has the, had. The whole first half, Fredonia's back was against the end zone. I yeah. mean, it was an uphill battle. But the miscues, getting all the way up the field and having something like a fumble in the end zone, it, it just, again, it, it, it's football. You never know what's going to happen, and those things can't happen. All right, here we go. Davi White is still in at quarterback. Luca goes with him. Twin receivers on each side. And here we go. The start of the second half. Hand off to Gullo right up the middle. Big hole. Nice first yard play. Oh is the boy. ball loose? Oh, boy. I don't see a signal from the ref. And the ref is, is signaling the other direction. And another, another turnover, turnover by Fredonia. Oh, my. Let's see the replay on that. And the Fredonia players almost can't believe it. Nice hole, good run. Again, and you can't even you can't see, see where it, it did, it's out on the ground there. The ground. 24 yep. of oh. Southwestern. Gabe Tiger, Tigger, Tiger. Frosted Flakes, I don't know, but he They're made great. a nice fumble recovery there. And <laughs> what a start yeah. by Southwestern here. So that whole discussion about Fredoni getting the ball back at the second half yeah. right. just went Wasted. right out the window. Back in the shotgun here, empty backfield. Larson's dropping back to throw. Quick throw's got to open Walsh. Walsh wide open. And nice open field tackle there. That's not an easy tackle made out there by Davi White on Walsh in the open field. But you, Again, we talk about you couldn't draw up a much worse start for Fredoni in the first half. It's not much That's better than second better right half. Right now. No. Nice no. throw and catch. And there's the tackle field finishing them off. First down Southwestern at the 30, well, just shy of the 31 yard line. And here we go again. You almost, this has to be, and you can see the energy, the mannerism of this Fredonia 
defense and sideline. They're looking beat, and they, I hate they saying do. that, but it, it's... Someone's got to make a play. Hand off to Walsh right off the middle. And he's going to be, yeah, gain of a couple. It's going to be third and short. Oh, no, sorry, second. second. That's right, they just got the first down on the pass play. So, gain about, actually, he fell forward for almost five yards on the play. It'd be second and about five. And that's running right at this defensive line uh, of Fredonia. And they, you know. <laughs> there's not much to say. Yeah, there's not much to say. It's, it's, you you just, know, at you some point, you just got to tip your hat to Southwestern. Coach Burkholder preparing his players to come out here. And here's a sweep to Larson on the outside. But Owen moving. Rush is there and comes up with the big tackle. And, and a negative play here on second down. So now it's going to be a third long. I'm sure it's, unless it's a field goal attempt, it's two down territory for the Trojans. But those are the type of plays this Fredonia team needs. And a real nice job uh, by Owen Rush containing there. That's textbook. And I think if we get the camera guys to zoom out just a hair on those people zooming in a hair too much um, on that. It's, it's so we can't see the whole play. But great job for our crew once again tonight. Now third and seven. Ball at the 29. Hayes is back under center. Larson in motion. Hands off to Walsh right out the middle. And he's tripped up. Number seven. Peyton Glavy uh, on the tackle, but Walsh did a really nice job diving forward over the smaller Glavy. And uh, bring a fourth down. And this is a key fourth down here in the first half, or second half. Uh, Fredonia has to come up with a stop. He cannot give up another touchdown here. Jameson Walsh, pretty big guy out there. He, yeah, he's a, he's a very big power back. He is. He had a real good season as a junior last year. Larson in motion. In motion back trying to get Fredoni to jump off. They're not going to do it here, and they're going to call it. Wow, that's an early good discipline by the Hillbilly defense. Yes. Watch the ball. They had no intention <laughs> of ever snapping that. Uh, and you know, until they practiced that, they did motion one way. The first guy in motion became set completely, allowing the second motion to come across the other way. Um, otherwise, it's illegal motion. So good job by the coaching staff. I don't love wasting a timeout that early, but I guess if you're up by three touchdowns, you're okay. not as concerned about You've got about some room to work with here. Yeah. You know, one thing I was looking at in the, in the uh, roster here, uh, Southwestern is going to have 12. They have 12 seniors this year. Fredonia, 19 seniors. That's a lot of seniors. That's a lot of seniors. A lot of talent um, coming, going to be graduating this year. And I mean, this team um, really is a lot of high expectations. And there's a little bit of pressure on the last two years. Uh, made it to the stadium, won the division, made it to the stadium. Section 6 runner-up, Class C, two years in a row. Um, you hate saying runner-up, but it's quite the accomplishment to make it there two years in a row. The goal was to get there and win this year and go on, but to going down two league losses in a row, if they can't come back some sort of comeback tonight, and they are going for a they field goal. For it. Yeah, and so this is this is a 40-yard field goal attempt, everyone. I know Coach Carlson has been watching, is licking his lips and loves seeing this. From Randolph. Now, well, is this something that uh, Southwestern's known to pull a fake on? Uh, no, he's he's a kicker that there he's out there is to kick. Oh, bad snap bad though. Snap. And Rush is there to finish off the holder. Yes. And that is a big break for Fredonia. Um, because who has the leg to make a 40-yard kick in high school is no easy no. thing to make. I mean, they uh, miss him in the NFL. Yeah. Yeah. So okay, the defense held. Now the offense has to get some, you know, yeah, it wasted some time, but Christ is kind of verted here, not giving up a touchdown after that opening um, carry fumble. So let's see if they're going to do any sort of uh, adjustments here in the lineup. It looks like maybe, uh, I don't know. They had talked, I talked coach, there's some talk of maybe using Jamison Quinn more at quarterback. There's some good sportsmanship by Tavi White. He gave their play card. Oh, no, the kicking tee. 
<laughs> the kicking tee was, was still wondering. out there. I'm like, man, the uh, wristband yeah. can fly pretty far. Yeah, right. <laughs> so Quinn, Jamison Quinn's in the backfield. Davi White is still at quarterback. Replacing Gullo. Field and Han to this side. Gullo and, ooh, almost fumbled the snap here. Quinn on the carry, but they Just are all, yeah, yards. Southwestern defense is swarming right yeah, now sure. with everything going in their favor tonight so far. Yeah, Fredoni's had pretty good luck getting the ball up the middle and when the one drive that they had when they were going pretty far. You know, they were getting the ball up the middle quite a bit, but man, once they tried to get to the outside, Southwestern was there to contain. Yeah, Fredoni's <laughs> offensive line is the strength of this team. Uh, four returning starters, Coosdale, Price, Story, and Rush, and Colin Kroll stepping in, and they've done a real nice job all season. Pitch out to Quinn to the outside, and he's got some room, and he's got there speed. It is. He gets the corner. Pushed out of bounds. And no, there's no penalty. I thought, I can't see, you couldn't see exactly where he went out of bounds, but there was a hit right along the sideline. But it must not have been late. Yeah, I was uh, expecting some kind of hold there, but. Oh, uh, actually, there wasn't a hit. They just, uh, it almost looked like a body went flying at the end. But on the replay, nothing happened at all. Um, so there's a first down for the Hillbillies. Quinn coming up with the big runs, and his speed is, he's 4-4, four, 4-5 four, four, in the 40, folks. He can fly. Now pitch back the other way, but and he is met. met there. Nowhere to go. 27. That's a great play there by Bowden Wendell. Uh, line, senior linebacker was ready for that play, and he came kind of in untouched. Great pursuit from behind there by 68, um, who's not allowing Jamison Quinn to cut it back at all. So third and long, loss of four on the play. So it's second and 14. Empty backfield here for White. Trips to the right. And it's a straight run by White again. Still met and up. He, yeah, and he's met back to back plays by. Another tackle by Bowden, Bowden Wendell. Stood, I mean, that might have been a gain of one or so on the play, but it looks like there might be a, yeah, there is a player slow to get up for Southwestern. Not sure what that little roll was. I, 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 <laughs> I was going to say, was it the worm? But yeah, uh, yeah. Kind of, uh, if uh, I tried that, I'd probably hurt my neck. You, you would think you'd have to go, out. yeah, they are. That was number four, Southwestern, George Marshall, sophomore linebacker, got up slow, has to go out of play. So it's third and we got 13 now. 12, handoff to Quinn up the middle. It's kind of a late handoff and. Yeah, and nothing, you just, you can just tell you can there's tell, yes. not a lot of confidence in this passing game right now um, of this Fredoni offense. White, White's, White's looking and very that, upset. Yes, and uh, Bacher is coming in to punt. And they got to get something going and get some. They cannot get any sort of rhythm going here. And there's on no offense. spark right now. No, it just, no, again, there's plenty of football left. And I know it's an uphill battle, but you can't put your head down. Yeah. It's just the last thing to do. Walsh and Larson back to return now. Uh, Bacher back to punt. Good snap. Much better punt this yes. time by Bacher, but it's right. oh, he bobbles the, ball. bobbles the ball. He's able to jump on it. Ooh. And that's a break there for Fredonia because Walsh gets going full steam in open field. He's tough to bring down. But good job by Walsh not panicking and get back on the ball. And now this Fredonia defense needs to come up with another stop and, and get the ball back. But offensively, there is just nothing going on right now. A lot of confidence lacking really missing uh, the running game of Sammy Atzrat tonight for the Hillbillies. And that's what these rivalry games do over history. You know, one team comes in heavily favored, it doesn't matter. It, just, it doesn't matter what the record is. You have to play. Brand new game. It's always Shotgun a brand new game. for Larson going back the other way in the counter. He gets the outside edge. As we right around that first down marker might be Depending where they mark it, just short. That was 27. Bowden Wendell on the carry. Nice couple plays on defense. Give him a carry on offense. You can see the 
fake the jet sweep, come back on the other way in the counter, and Bacher got sucked in to end. Tim Fields able to make the tackle, but not for a nice gain on first down. Gain of what looks like about eight. No, nine. Box moved up a yard. So he's second down and one. Second down and one for the Trojans. And Fredonia it seems to, when they try to get to the outside here, it looks like Southwestern's been really trying to push it this time. I'm curious to see what they do at number eight. Hayes under center, motion by Larson, going to Walsh right up the middle. And he's Ooh, at hard. Good stop. Nice tackle there. It's like uh, My Ian Story, I believe, is the one to hit him first. 79, and he's holding the shoulder a little bit after that one. But they do give him a first down. And the Fredonia defense didn't think he had a first down, but it would have been third and inches without it. So it is a first down for Southwestern. Now again, the, the touchdown Southwestern had on offense, that was their first offensive touchdown of the year, you said? First and only. There's only oh. been one still. Two and a half I'd say, <laughs> two and a half games. They have one offensive touchdown in the season. Four tonight total, two defensive, one special team. Or two special teams, excuse me, one defense. Walsh run hard, but good job by that Fredonia defense swarming there. You, you got Bacher in on it, Peyton Glavy in on that play. Good swarm of Fredonia players. Yeah, loss of one on the play. So the Fredonia crowd is trying to help get back in it. That's kind of the loudest cheer I've heard in a long time out of them. It's been a long time a home Fredonia crowd has been this quiet in a the game. They usually do a really nice job, provide a lot of energy for the players on the field, but. It's hard, you don't have anything to cheer about no, to be no. loud and excited. There's only been a couple big, big plays from Fredonia right now. Twins right, Hayes is in shotgun with Walsh to his left, and he is dropped back to pass, swings it out to Walsh. Flag on the play. There is a flag. Walsh gets pushed out of bounds, but it looks like it might, might be holding. holding. You see 68 complaining, I didn't do it, I didn't do Tavio, it. Tavio, who's yeah. uh, kind of pleading his case. Yeah, let's see if we can see it. Um, Hoos is outside, and I, I didn't see I didn't a see lot there. Uh, maybe Hoos has a little bit to complain about. Tough assignment on Owen Rush. It looked like he had, did a pretty nice job against him. So they're going to take the penalty, obviously, on that, and it's 10 yards from the spot of the foul. So. It's going to be more than a 10-yard penalty because it was in the backfield. Uh, you know, that's an offensive lineman blocking an end, three, four yards past the line of scrimmage. Right. So it's going to be second and... Very long. Yeah, about 24 on the clock here. And this is the first time I think I've seen Southwestern backed up towards their end yeah, zone yeah, this whole game. Behind. And so obviously, you, Fredonia, you got... I mean, the clock's running. There's only three minutes left in the first quarter right now. Motion... Pitch out here to Larson. Glavy there and Rush cleaning him up. It's not Larson, actually, it's 18. My apologies. Declan Kennedy, who had a touchdown earlier trying to go wide. But Glavy disrupted the play, and Rush is going to clean it up. Good job by those two outside linebacker and end keeping that play in the middle of the field and not giving Kennedy the edge. So now it's third in a mile, and I think no <laughs> gain on that play. Third and 21. Said so Glavy got in on that stop. It's like he read it pretty good. Yes. And that's the key. If you're an outside linebacker and you have to keep that containment, you cannot let the guy get outside of you um, and turn the corner. You have no help on the outside besides a lonely corner out there. Um, and that can be pretty tough. So that was a good job by both those young men containing. And now we're going to have a second timeout already here by Southwestern on third and long. They don't want to make a mistake. Right. Up three scores, you don't want a turnover, you don't want another big negative play. It's almost, I mean, third and 24, 21, whatever it is now, 
there's not a, the success rate percentages are very slim. It happens. Yes. yes. It happens too often, probably, but it's a low percentage. So you don't want. You got to get this right if you're Southwestern. You can't commit a turnover right here. See, see, a piece of me is. I don't want to see Southwestern special teams come out because they've had a very good night. I think I want the punter out there. <laughs> I mean, yeah, no, I understand. I'd rather no. see them uh, it hasn't try, gone to, well. try to go and well, they're not the going to go for it unless it's maybe fourth and one or something. But like I, that. I, I know it yeah. will be the punt. Um, and you got to avoid. You don't want to if you're Fredonia, You don't want a penalty defensively here either to give them no, the first no. down. You got to be disciplined. And Fredonia's defense has been out on the field a lot tonight. It's the second half, yeah. I mean, almost this whole third quarter. It was a one-play fumble and maybe one first down to Fredonia and their second drive before the punt. 2.20 left in the third quarter. Southwestern up 28, Fredonia 6. Shotgun. Hayes is going to throw, looking for the screen. Rushes all over him. Oh, oh, it's a lineman. Yep, illegal, yeah, you know, I was gonna you know, say you know, ineligible. Yeah, he was more. <laughs> he, I don't think he knew what to do with it. Yeah, I, he saw a white jersey open <laughs> and threw it to a lineman. Will, Will Pavlov. Yeah, <laughs> it looked good job by there, Ian Story. Yes, and putting the pressure on. No, 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 that was old rush pressure. Jackson, I don't know if you can go back again. He read the screen right away as a defensive lineman. Go back to the beginning. 76 is he? No, in? no, no. Watch right here in the middle. 79. Oh, he, he starts 79. right here. He okay. starts the pass. Keep going, Jackson. He realizes it's a screen. He's dropping back there, trying yes. to get it to Walsh. That's a great job by the junior there, disrupting that whole play that most people would never even notice. And I wouldn't have either if it wasn't for the replay. So good job by our crew there. Um, a little lesson <laughs> there, and, and hopefully the coaching staff will give them a little. Uh, Props for that play there too. So there's a legal touching, uh, legal receiver. I think it's a loss of down on this play too. Eligible downfield. Yeah. So Coach Sherlock, yeah, if it's not a loss of down, I think he just declined the penalty and make him punt it. But that's what's discussion going on right now. And the officials look a little. It's been it's been one of those too. nights. The officials yeah. have to really figure this out. Because I don't know why you want to waste another play. They're still still be fourth and long. Yeah, they declined the penalty. And that's exactly what's going on here. And that's why they marched the ball back forward. But it's still going to be fourth and long. And, and Walsh has got to come on the punt here. I mean, I guess you could fake it, but up three scores and all the momentum. Two minutes left in the third quarter. You're punting the ball here if you're the Trojans. And why, why did they move the box up, though? Because they declined the penalty, so they got the yardage. No, I understand that, but I thought that's the box. Where the, that's where the ball, they gained a couple yards. Okay, play. okay. Oh, okay, because, yep. uh, yeah, 70 yeah. had the ball. I thought he yeah. still, yeah. So Walsh back to punt, Quinn back to return. Great punt by Walsh. Is that going to get it's by good. Quinn? Oh, yeah, boy. that's got a, a good beautiful bounce. Perfect punt by Walsh there. No chance to return. Um, back to about the 26 yard line of the Hillbilly. So another big play by Jamison Walsh with a nice punt. During this change, I do want to give a special thanks. Um, every week, the Fredonia community helps the coaching staff provide a pregame meal for these young players. And that takes a lot of time and effort by people like Regina Willie and Shirley Miller in the past. There's many other people behind the scenes that um, I'm not going to mention because I don't want to do them all. But there's also a lot of donations to from Matt Lauder, uh, Fred's, Dupers, Mancusos, and Campanos, and there's many others donating food for those pregame meals. So we really appreciate it. Good job by the Fredonia community. Here's White, staying in the pocket nicely there. Oh, and oh. Just dropped it. And we, we talked about it earlier, White stayed in the pocket yes. and got the pass off. He took a hit eventually, but that was, he had plenty of time here. Watch, you're counting. He's staying in there. And before he was leaving, passes just high um, for Jamison Quinn, but 
I Much thought Quinn better. was going to bring yeah, that down. Yeah. It was close. That's a much better job by um, the senior, but first year starting quarterback controlling things a little bit. There's, there hasn't, he hasn't been running a ton. His heart's beating a little slower right now. Makes it a little easier. Second down and 10 now. Ferroni's got to get some first downs here, put something together and get on the board. Get back within two touchdowns. White's going to run it here. Big Plenty hole. Room. And he's going to be right around that first down marker. Nice job by the right side of the line here. Or excuse me, left side of the line. Coosdale and Story. Creating a nice hole there. Johnny going to the, uh, almost like the hurry up here. they did get a first down. Yeah, well they need to. They're down three yep. scores. Clock's running towards the end of the third quarter. They want to get some momentum here. Get some rhythm. White drops back to throw again, staying in the pocket nicely. He has time. Now he's going to throw it out to Gullo, but Ooh, just short. couldn't get it. And the receivers, you know, I'm watching Davi. I'm not watching receivers see if they're open on the play, but I'm very happy to see Davi staying in that pocket and looking to throw the ball first. Yes, trusting his, his offensive line. They've been able to hold their blocks, especially yeah. on those passes. And now the receivers, if they're not open, because um, obviously White's not finding them if they are open, but they got to help them out now and get open and make some plays, and you're going to get something going here if they can develop a passing game and a rushing game. It looks like Quinn's taking this snap at quarterback. White's not sure where he's supposed to go because, you know, he's not used to not being at quarterback. Second and 10. They got to get going here. It's going to be delayed a game. White still doesn't know the play, you can tell. And it is a pass play. Oh. Oh. Pass Quinn was intended to Mike Hahn. Uh, falls incomplete, bringing up third down. Again, the, the coverage wasn't too bad there. He would have just get the ball up a little bit more. Little, yeah, it wasn't the best of throws no. by any means. But that's not Quinn's strength. He's just such a great athlete. They're yeah. trying to... Give the ball in the hands still of looking, their best athletes. Davi's still looking kind of confused yeah. out there right now. And Third and 10 here. Big down for the Hillbillies. You know, they got to convert and actually get some first downs. White drops back to throw. Still steps time. up. Hits his receiver, but he's tackled right away. Strong Butterfield right there. Number 35. Let's see. I'm trying to see who made the catch. That's number 12. 13. Let's see on the replay. 12. 12, yeah, that is Brady Helmer on the catch. It's his first catch of the season. The junior as well. Yep, gain of about four on the play. And like you said, Butterfield made a, a catch right away. So now fourth down here, fourth and six. White back to throw. Still time. Getting now, changed. Yo, I, Cut up field. And he's going to be short, I think. I don't think they're going to give it to him. You got to know where. I know there's no marker on the sideline, but you got to. Yeah, he is going to be short. short. He had no idea where the marker was because there's, you know, at NFL or other levels, it's on both sidelines. Right, right. And he just goes out of bounds here instead of putting his shoulder down. Again, he didn't know where that first down marker, and he's going to be a yard or two short. And that's a turnover on downs against the Hillbillies. And you can see. Uh, Davi, Davi's looking very winded. Yeah. Is this his second year playing QB or first year? First year first playing year. QB. Yep. And it's, it's a lot to learn in a short amount of time. They played QB some in Midget, like, and that was for Dunkirk too, because yeah. uh, he lived in Dunkirk for a while and moved to Fredonia, uh, let's see, maybe two years ago now. He was and back up to Fry, right? A little bit. A little bit. Didn't play much. Keegan Whitfield took some snacks there. Hand off to Walsh here and two Wide nice cuts. There he goes. Jamison Quinn fighting off that stiff arm and he's going to be stopped just, just shy. Shy. Oh, we got a Fredonia player back around the 30 yard line down. Let's see another bigger. So here it is now. Trainers and you got. 
Field missing a tackle and Bacher missing a tackle. And if it wasn't for Jamison Quinn's speed, that's an easy touchdown for Walsh. He's gonna be stuck Just right, yo. Second, third yard line. So we have a cramp on the field possibly. That's another big play by this Southwestern team. And Walsh just running the ball right up. Oh yeah, he's uh, well over, he's probably at 150 yards anyway. He had a couple big runs now. Coach Burkholder bring out some water for the Fredonia player. I see good sportsmanship there. So wow. That, it, Really, nothing's really changed here so far for Fredoni in the second half. Um, you know, you got the ball, you had a fumble turnover, you had a punt and a turnover on downs offensively um, for Fredonia this half. And there's been no score, but Southwestern now is going to have first and goal uh, with 21 seconds left in the third quarter. And it is Tim Field coming off the game, holding his back leg. It looks like some cramping issue, Coach. Mason out there helping him out. And Coach Sherlock, Jordan Sherlock, the defensive coordinators, trying to motivate the troops to come up with a big stop here. You know, make a play. They need a big play from somebody here to have any chance to get back in this game. And Fredonia, you can see they're just, they're very quiet right now there. Oh yeah, they, 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 this whole place is the quiet. Spark, the spark is just very dim right now. Oh, Riley, what are you doing? Walsh takes a direct snap and is in for the touchdown. So that's another touchdown for Southwestern. Increasing the lead, the 34 to six with the extra point attempt to follow. And this is getting ugly for the Hillbillies. Yes, very. Seventeen seconds left and I haven't heard this place this quiet in a long time. And I, I will admit I was very surprised on how this all turned it out. And Hoos's extra point attempt is good, making the score 35 to six. 17 seconds left in the third quarter. And there's not a lot more you can say at this point. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, unfortunately I'm trying to figure out what to say. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, uh, I mean, what we could say is what a job by Coach Burkholder and the Trojans right yes, now tonight. Yes. They really came out here. They were motivated. They were amped up. They had lost three games in a row to this Fredonia team, which does not sit well with any player from or coach or parent, really, a member of the community. Nobody wants to lose to Fredonia or no one wants to lose to Southwestern in these two communities. No, no. And uh, they execute. They made plays early. And they got momentum, and they have not given it back to Fredonia. And that, that fumble in the end zone for the touchback, that was a huge play by Southwestern. That's been a game changer that Fredonia was getting back in the game, a chance to tie it up right there, and it just hasn't gone right since. Yeah, it's, <laughs> you, you said it. I don't know how much way better no, you can no, say it. <laughs> you know, Jamison Wallace has had a, a beautiful game on the ground, um, but there's been a lot of key players in Southwestern making different plays uh, different ways tonight. Who's kicking off? Quinn is deep. He takes in the one hop right at the 10-yard line. Gets by the first guy, but can't get by the second. It's going to be tackled right around the 31, 32-yard line. Eight seconds left in the third quarter. Yeah, we got the scoreboard back. Okay. 
All right, so first and 10 for Fredonia at their own 32 yard line. And if nothing else, they got to get something going with this offense, even for the rest of the season at this point. Now, again, they scored 41 and 40 points the first two games. So had a lot of, of rhythm the first two weeks. You know, too many mistakes last week, but a lot of scoring. We were short a player there, Jay Kelmer running on. Um, <laughs> But again, it's just, that's the story of tonight. Just a little confusion, unsure what's going on. A lot of questioning. White looking, throwing out to Quinn. Quinn catches it, cuts back. Still got some moves. And nice job by Quinn. It was a yak, the yards after catch. Um, turning a three, four yard gain into a first down for the Hillbilly. That's Good job, nice job blocking downfield there by Brady Helmer as well, helping out his fellow receiver. Nice job on the crew. Jackson Inkey and Chip Rewild and the rest of them on out there tonight. Doing a great job on the camera. And here we're gonna have a little highlight film from last week's game. Some great photos here. Taken by Isaac Williams. Nice job by a young man in Fredonia High School. And those look great. That was an exciting game last week. Look at those shots. It's a good job by the crew and Isaac. Congratulations on some great photographs there. I know he's had a lot of the sporting events the last couple of years, taking pictures, um, athletic events, and others as well. So now to start, sorry, Rob. No, I was going to say fourth quarter. What do you, what do, you do here? <laughs> I, you just got to take this literally one possession at a time right now. It, it's going to take a lot to come back. It, crazy things have happened. But you just, you got to get just something going. Get some momentum, momentum going. Get something to feel good about uh, for really the rest of the season. Because right now, emotionally, they're... They're at a very low point out there. You can tell it in them. They're frustrated. They, you can see it in the coaching staff and the players right now. Hand off here to Gullo. Nice hole left side. Good job there. Run out to midfield. Just It looks like to be spot just shy of midfield. A six yard There's pickup. another player down right now. I wonder if that, that's field again. And we've seen him. His leg's been really hurting. And he's down on his belly. Yeah, so. he's in a little bit of pain right now. Coaching staff out to check on him. So I mean, after a game like this, you know, depending on you know, what the outcome is, you know, you go back, you go back, look at film, and try to see where where were you missing, right? Yeah, what, what went wrong, right? I mean, that's – and how are you going to fix it? And that that's that's the key. You know, next week, from Frodonia's perspective, they will be playing Portville, um, which is no slouch whatsoever. Mm -mm. And, and thank goodness for Frodonia, they don't have to go to Portville. And the following week, they're at Salamanca. Southwestern, let me pull up their schedule here. One moment, please. Uh, definitely, this is a big momentum gain um, for Southwestern. The, this continues the way we're looking. Is going to go to two and zero in the league, and and that's you know that's great for Southwestern because they got blown out by CSP in the first game of the year. CSP is a, a powerhouse class D team, though you know. And right. If you're you know the traditional Southwestern team that we've seen for so many years. You know, they don't lose a Class D team very often. You know, they don't lose to anyone very often. Um, so, and CSP had uh, two big wins. They beat Randolph last week in their first league. Con and it's nice to see Tim Field walk up, but he is in some discomfort. I don't think that's just cramping that we no, saw that, with him that's, earlier. That's something a little more. No idea what happened or, or, or where on that. But, um, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm trying to get to so. Western schedule, but I'm not having much luck on my phone. I can't remember where they go next week, but they, you know, they're be two and zero in the league as well. And 
They will, I believe, their last game of the year is against the uh, Casadega Maple Grove Faulkner team, who right now, from what I've seen, is the powerhouse of the division. But this game's far from over. 11 minutes in the fourth quarter still. Gullo in the backfield right behind White. White quick throw to Quinn, goes up and gets it. Gets by the first guy, cuts inside. And finally, the fourth guy is able to get him out of bounds, but not for another first down. Nice job by Quinn, who's almost single-handedly trying to bring this offense back alive. He had to go up and get that. Breaks the first tackle with a nice stiff arm. Acceleration, quick spin caught, and there's a nice tackle there. A little extra push out of bounds. I thought it was a little too much, but. Gullo on the carry and dives forward for a nice gain on first down. Kroll, the nice pancake block there. Second down. Gain of about four. Trips to the left, Quinn to Loner see the right, going right back to Gullo here. Nice hole off the left Probably hand side. Can he get curtain. to the outside? One guy to beat, and he's going to be stopped just no, Oh, touchdown. touchdown! Very nice run by Luca Gullo there, and showing off his speed once he got into open space and dove. Here it is. Look at this hole. Good job by Kuzdale and Kroll creating that. It's a cut here. Very cuts to the outside and just really turns on the burners. And you're going to see him dive, hitting that pylon for the touchdown. And let's see, Fernoni looks like they are going to go for two. That makes the score 35 to 12. And all of a sudden you hear the crowd a little bit. Waking that's back a, up. That's a big play. That was a real nice, you saw some through the air and some on the ground. Back to Gullo off the right hand side. Oh. No, I think he's just going to be short. He got stood up and couldn't quite get into the end zone. Um, good play there by defensive, and here we're going to see. I didn't see who made the tackle, but. Oh, that's a good job getting off the block of Trying rush there. Through. Yeah, that real yeah, nice job by 68. Eight. That's Hoos again, another big play. And Owen Rush, a trench uh, award nominee after week one, is no slouch to, to get off a block from. So that's a real nice play by the sophomore. He is going to be a real good football player. Already is a real good football player. But Fredoni got a score. They had a drive. They made some plays. Threw the ball, ran the ball. Got a little life here. Uh, do you, you know, Southwestern, I'm sure, is talking about it. But do you try something here on special teams? Do you try an onside? Do you try to get some momentum back? Uh, more momentum back? Uh, from the hillbillies, you got you can create a turnover here in special teams. Yep. You can get right back in this game, but they're still down what? a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> you know it's like I tell my I tell my Three, four my score, youth football yeah. players. There's there's plenty of football left. Yeah, one you, play at a time. One play at a time, and you you play till the zero. You know, and the one thing I I'm gonna say this: Sam Atzrat can't play right now because of his shoulder, but he's out on the kickoff team. That makes, I'm going to say, it, that makes absolutely 190% zero sense. Isn't this uh, the kickoff team usually the well, more? Well, he's great at coverage. He yeah. is, like, phenomenal at coverage. But if he can do this, then he should be able to play defense. Or, like, or right. let it heal. If he can't play and he's such a key part, you got to I don't know. I completely disagree with that. And, uh, Sorry, coaching staff, but it just makes no sense to me to, to risk that at this point. And they're looking for onside, too. No one's deep here for Fredonia. And it's a short. Oh, we're going to have a penalty of sentence. By the way, that's 31. Yep. Caden uh, Rittenberg on kicking the junior. Uh, but it looks like someone crossed the line before Rittenberg was able to kick it. So it's going to be pushed back five yards. Get another special, another penalty on special teams. Yep. I mean, the first pe the first special teams penalty was not caused by special teams, but it affected the special teams. Yeah, 100%. Jake Helmer, 
running out to Rittenberg now to give him a little instructions from the sideline. Yeah, they are expecting, they are playing. They are playing deep, up. Yeah. <laughs> and it is an outside in the lineman there, 53 as Southwestern is able to catch the big hop. That's Leo Kavik, the sophomore. And again, there's a lot of sophomores on this roster. Yes. Uh, of Southwestern, but it's not easy to do as a lineman when that ball's spinning and bouncing and coming right at you 10 yards away to catch it and wisely falls down. So looks like next year, Fredonia is going to have 17 seniors on the team, 17 juniors if they continue on with their football career. They'll be going to becoming seniors. So again, a lot of guys moving up next year. Yeah. The numbers of Fredonia is great. Uh, it's historically, it's been growing, um, and that has a lot to do with the coach staff. Um, Fredonia bringing back a lot of football spirit and getting people to want to play. They actually went back to three teams this year. Shotgun here by Hayes, but hands it off to Walsh. And that's uh, Kata there, another nice tackle. The sophomore, that's his first start of the season, 58 of Fredonia. He's had a pretty nice game. He's impressed me tonight. It's really the first time I've seen him play um, myself. Not bad for a sophomore. No, no. And he's not the biggest linebacker in the world, and I have some experience with that with my son, Micah, playing linebacker <laughs> the last couple of years. Um, but he was a tough kid. Yeah, and so and Kata is showing the same thing. Kata, is it Kata? Kata. Kata, all right. Back under center here for Hayes. I'm terrible at names. We don't have easy names like Davis. Yeah, Sorry. yeah, right. Motion here, and they're going to give it to Walsh up the middle, and he makes one nice move. There's a good tackle by Glavy. And it looks like Davi White was in there again. Glavy well, looks a, a little uh, shooken up there. Well, again, Glavy's another smaller linebacker, and Peyton is one of the toughest kids you're going to see out there. And so if he's saying he bent over a little bit of pain, he, it hurt a little. But that's, Walsh just, uh, he's got a lot of pounds on Peyton. And Peyton puts his shoulder right in. He, he did it all last year, too, making a number of big plays for um, the Fredonia defense. So third and short here, big down. Clock's rolling nine minutes. They got to get the ball back. Everybody's up in the box. They give it Good to Walsh. Stop. And all is going to depend on the spot now. The one judge looks like he's behind yeah. the marker. Yeah, it looks like it might be just a so bit shy. Far, fourth and inches here. The official is looking, yeah, and they are calling fourth down. So now you're, you're, you're bringing in an extra defensive lineman, Simon Price coming in. Uh, you know, you're looking at QB sneak here or. It's either a sneak or Walsh, you got to think. Again, I've, we've seen Southwestern run to the outside, too. Yeah. On some of these fourth down plays, fourth and short. Yeah, I, I'm, yeah, they could. No doubt about it. They might, you know, think, oh, everyone's in the box. We're going to try to get to the outside. Don't you playing tough up front. But it's hard to stop fourth and inches right up the middle. Timeout oh, here oh. by Southwestern. And uh, Burkholder obviously didn't like the look. He saw the extra defensive lineman yep. probably thought there was no chance of the play he knows and that's his last time out already but he knows how important this first down is too you know you get another first down worst case scenario you run another minute or two off the clock um and that's in their favor yep just you know lead that big just run the football try to put this away Section 6 football's definitely changed quite a bit since when I played. Um, I mean, very competitive now. And, and it's great to see that. Yeah, no, there's a lot of good football out here in Western New York at, from D to double A. Uh, there's no doubt about it. And we've had a lot of, um, not only here in, from Fredonia, but um, from Western New York, you have a lot of kids going on and playing college football, D3, 2, and 1 um, from Fredonia and you know, all over Western New York. So it's that's really great to see 
Um, not only success in high school, make it to the next level. They say about six to seven percent of high school athletes play college sports yep. in general, not just football, but sports in general. So it's a great accomplishment for all these young athletes. So here we go, fourth down, fourth and inches. It looks like they might, yeah, there's a wildcat, a little sh uh, right to Walsh. So you get, he's gonna catch it and run and look for a hole and he's got it and then some. And then still, some. still on his feet, he's gonna score. So he breaks it out and what? <laughs> Another, Another big play. touchdown from Walsh. Something, something tells me Mr. Jamison Walsh might get his Connolly Cup nomination after tonight's performance. He's going to be closing in on close to 200 yards, a number of defensive plays as well. Uh, what a night for that young man, and he'd rather do it <laughs> no one else. Uh, you know, if you're going to pick one big game to have, you're going to pick it against Fredonia if you're a Southwestern player. The stats that were handed to me, he only had 28 yards yeah. going into this yeah, game. Yeah, it was. Well, their their offense was you know, anemic before tonight, but that, that's what momentum will do for you. Who's on to try the extra point? Snap is down, and the kick is good. Did it? It stayed in. It stayed in this time. Yeah. <laughs> and there is a player down. That's Simon Price, starting third year starting center for Fredonia. So yeah, that's the last thing they want is their starting center to go down. But he's up, he's and, up walking and walking off. Yep. Looks a little uncomfortable. Unfortunately, Simon is. Just had a lot of ankle issues over his his career, and yeah, center, I don't know center's not a position not. I yeah. would want to play. No, it's one of the toughest positions out there. And you're you're the quarterback of the line too, and having a yep. third third year starter there is a real advantage for Fredonia. Eight fourteen, thirty point deficit. Fredonia is now facing. Um, you know, it's not looking good. It hasn't been looking good for no. a long time. No. But yeah. <laughs> that might have been the nail in the coffin. Yeah. I mean, and it, I didn't have a lot of confidence, but you knew there was a chance that with this offense, you could have maybe get something going and got momentum in the second half, but it didn't. No, no. I never mean, developed. I, never. I, I figured, okay, the kickoff, you know, hey, that happens. But when the yeah. block punt happened, it's like, okay, what's going on yeah, here? Yeah. <laughs> but. Even after that, I go back, it was 14-6, chance to go in the end zone, and it, it didn't quite happen. Right. Now, Fredonia's next game, Portville, as you said, yeah. in Port, Portville, I believe. they've Ever since I played, they they were always a very well, tough they're league. They were tough. They were in Class D tough last team. year. They moved back up to Class C, so we haven't. I haven't seen them play in a couple years, but there's always tough boys down there in Portville. Who sits a line drive, low line drive kick. Quinn takes it on the hop, tries to get to the outside, He's still on room. his feet. He's got some room. And it's going to be taken down finally close to the 40 yard line. Another nice, nice return by Jamison Quinn, which, you know, Jamison Quinn might be one of the low highlights offensively and special teams that we've seen tonight. He's really made a lot of plays. Good block there by Luca Gullo. And finally brought down. 8.03 remaining, 42 to 12. Yeah, I, I, I will admit, uh, I wasn't expecting this. Nope, um, nope. I'm a little relieved that neither of my sons are on the field for this one because are, are they messaging you right now uh i, I might have got what the blank is going on earlier <laughs> from one of them um i know they're definitely both watching as many of the alumni are hand off to gullo and, and there he is again number 58 yeah 68 who's 68 sorry. i know i've done that a couple times too who's, almost, yep. he's he's had a great night on defense the sophomore Tackle for a loss of one. Gullo was on the carry. Second down and 11. So no, no urgency here. You know, this is 
White drops looking for Quinn. Great coverage there by number 18, uh, Declan Kennedy, the senior. So uh, when you're when you're down by 30 points, seven minutes to go in the fourth, do you start putting in some of your younger players to get them some playing time, or is it just one of those you just keep kind of working uh, through it? Well, that's that's a really good question, Rob. Um, yeah, at what point do you do you work in the subs? Um, it's it's not traditional, <laughs> or at least around here a lot of times. You know, it's hard though with C because yeah, there's one thing to put subs in, but it's you, what happens when you put too many subs in at once. It's you get real bad, real yeah, ugly. yeah. Of things course, things change real bad. Ooh, big hit there. Ooh, flag came in late. That be uh, I'll see the I replay on that. Yeah. That might have been a helmet to helmet. That I didn't know. The story is slow to get up, but let's see. Gullo on the carry cuts off. Oh, he Ooh, grabbed him right around the head, like yep. a clothesline. Yep. It's a, it's a uh, horse, not a horse collar, but it's Bowden a. Wendell was made, had some nice defensive plays there. They're calling him a face mask, according to the yeah personal foul face mask. The official said so. 15 yarder. Um, you know, any hits up around the head in today's world. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they, all the football we were ever taught oh. was you, you hit with whatever you had. Now it's all hands, yeah, heads up. Yeah, you know, and, and it's for the safety. And it of the is, player. absolutely. I, I get it. it. It's hard sometimes. Is who doesn't like to watch a big hit, but it's dangerous. Gullo to White's right, trips left. Quinn, the lone receiver, bottom, and gives it back to Gullo, and he's tackled, hit first by Walsh in the backfield. I think he got back, maybe gained a one on the play. It was a good job by Gullo even getting one yard on that play. And just looking at some of the stuff in the Southwestern defense, I mean, the sacks tonight, they just, the block punt. Um, again, the, the Southwestern defense definitely had a good night. Yeah, no, I mean, all three facets of the game, they've made plays on, and that's why the score... White Bob and then he forced him out and he ran right into Walsh. And there's Mr. Walsh again padding that resume for a Connolly <laughs> Cup nomination with a huge sack. That kind of has resulted the higher snap bobbling it, caused a little bit of instant panic. Again, Kuzdale, if he stays in his pocket, Walsh isn't getting to White there. You can't, you know, you can't really blame Tyler Kuzdale on that. A little bit of panic after the bobbled snap. Um, ran right into that sack. Third in a mile here, around 18 to 20 yards. White takes the snap, looking for Quinn, and it's picked off. Oh, boy. And White's able to get out there. That's number 12, Jackie Knight, um, who was, uh, was able to come up with that pick, read the post play there perfectly. Stepped right into it. You know, they know you know you're gonna want to get it to Quinn if you're Southwestern. And the linebacker stepped out, did a nice shot. That's a nice catch there by the linebacker. Yes. That's not easy to do. And if Davi White doesn't come up with um a touchdown there, it, or the tackle there, it would have been another defensive touchdown. I think that's a younger brother, uh, another former Southwestern player graduated two years ago, who ended up in Alfred playing receiver, his older brother. Um I don't know if he's playing again this year, but he was playing at Alfred last year. Yeah, the turnovers have been the story tonight, too. Maybe just, oh. it just the mistakes. Just, yep. Right back to Walsh, still on his feet, and he's going to be tackled from behind there by Colin Kroll. Clock running just over five minutes. I think any, everyone here on this Fredonia sideline and uh, coaching staff spectators kind of just can't wait for this one to get over at this yeah, point. Yeah, it's, it's, it's... And to your point, Rob, now, like, to me, especially on defense, it's easier sneaking subs on defense. Oh, yeah, absolutely. You know, and... Offense what, is a what, craft. What, you, you, you know. give up another touchdown here, and what does it matter? You know, get some guys. See Ben Legro in there right now, which I don't remember seeing a ton of. He started a game or two. It's number nine. Other than that, I, that's the only new player I'm really noticing. Walsh, of course, Walsh is still carrying it, too. 
right. and he is and going, going to away. score it once again. Not even Jamison Quinn's going to catch him, and he does it. And that's another score for Walsh, and that's got to put him over 200 yards rushing tonight. Just and he's exhausted. Yes. He's Look at this another nice block there by 27. End is kicked out there. It's rush kicked out. One missed tackle, but it's hard for these secondary players to tackle such a big back like Walsh when he has a full head of steam, and, and that that's created by a big hole on. Yep, it. you know he. <laughs> And if it's not there, he can probably just open it up himself. Yeah, that mean, was a real nice job by Wendell there on that block, taking out the linebacker, Glavy, on that lead block. And Noose, oh, oh. that. And they are waving that off. Yeah, no, that is not something. It's about the only thing that has gone wrong for Southwestern tonight, because Noose actually missing, or how, who's actually picking, missing an extra point. 4.28 to go, fourth quarter. And, he uh, just yanked that one. It's been a, it's been a long night for the well, Billies. Maybe it was something with the holder because he <laughs> said something to him afterwards there. But he's like, no, I put it down. 4.28, 48 to 12. Philly is still con uh, joining us right now. 428 left in the fourth quarter. Uh, 48 to 12. Who's kicking off once again? We've seen this a lot tonight. Quinn, the lone deep back, the returner. Probably for those guys taking the camera down. Short kick bounces over Helmer's head. Great to Quinn right around the 15. Quinn's he's got, got some room. He's got some room on the outside. Oh, gets by Kenny. Outrun. Oh, he's got it. He's moving. And that is a very a nice big special team. Yeah, that's yes, a great return. Very, very. Again, it's hard to cheer too much for Jamison Quinn, but that's a real nice return uh, on his part. Nice. <laughs> High bounce. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and that's, uh, you see him, he gets to the edge here, and once Quinn gets his speed in open space, we'll cut back there, and now he just out. It looks like three had an angle on him. I, Mike but Ball, not, I thought I thought Mike Ball was going to get him, and then number Mike six. For I'm sorry. Yep. Wrong one. <laughs> Michael Kunkel. But with Quinn's speed, he just pulls. He just, yeah. yeah, yeah. And there's a little smile. Out of Jameson Quinn, and he deserves a smile. On to attempt the extra point now is number 10, Aiden Shikansky, I believe is 10, right? Yes. And he's got, I hope he stretched out a little bit because he's been staying on the sideline a long time to kick his extra point. Low snap, Ooh. kind of a self timing, and you can't see he wasn't able to get a good put on that. And the extra point attempt is no good, and that kind of sums up <laughs> tonight. Yes, Just can't up, pull it together. And down. <laughs> yeah. Four fifteen, eighteen to forty-eight, a thirty-point game. Yeah, so it'll be interesting um, how they're kicking off. You know, maybe you would think at this point you get some subs in there on defense. Yeah, I, I, I would I, like I, to see I would. that. I mean, uh, you got to keep again. you got to keep people interested. The, the second you got to yeah. give them experience. Right. I mean, you, too, you know, so they can learn. Again, a thirty-point deficit. 
yeah. you know, four minutes to go. I mean, you know, let, let some of your younger yeah. kids in there to yeah. see right. what it's like to be on the and, big and field. They, they go to practice every day, too, so they deserve – so, so, I mean, you're, you're not entitled. Don't, don't get me wrong here. I'll be the last person to say, and you got to earn it. But, but, you know, if you're out there every day and the score's out of hand, you know, get get some people out there to give them a, give them a chance. Right. Get them a feel. Keep them interested. So you think with Azrat not being in there today, that, that definitely... Oh, it affects hurts. the game. There's no doubt. I mean, he, he's... He's a powerhouse offensively and defensively, um, but I, I, it's, to me, it's not like they couldn't have done this without them. They just made so many mistakes. Very, yeah, unfortunately. Tonight, and, and Southwestern took advantage, and they made plays themselves. You, you can't, you, you have to give Southwestern credit tonight. You just have to. Uh, that's 31, sorry, uh, kicking off for Fredonia, Caden Rittenberg. In Southwest, and ready for the onside. A little bit of kick, and yep, it's just going to come up and fall on it at about the 36 yard line. But it looks like a lot of the starting defensive players are still going out there, including Davi White himself. Probably just to keep the reps. I mean, uh, uh, it's just, yeah. I, I don't know. Or do you let them rest up and, uh, you know, yeah. get ready for a yeah, that's another tough battle? Defense still out there for Fredonia with four minutes left. Um, I mean, it looks like uh, Southwestern trying to look along the sideline here. They still got some yeah. of their starters out there, too. Oh, absolutely, I mean, but I don't see Walsh out there right now. And actually, it's new receivers, still starting quarterback. But again, it's hard to sub everyone on offense. Right, you right. You get plays off and right, not look right. like a circus. But that's a new back in there. That's four, is, is that 14. Look like a 14. That's what I was thinking too. But I want, yeah, that's 14. That's uh, Larson, who's who's been in the game all all receiver a lot. Uh, hasn't got a lot of carries at running back. So even then, you got a starter going out getting some experience doing in a different something. position. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, there's well, Kuzdale's a you know starter going in. Um, yeah, I, I, I got to say, I don't understand some of that either. And they're bringing in extra defensive linemen here. I was just expecting the Southwestern to hand the ball off, and why wouldn't they? Taking as much time as they can off the clock. Hayes is looking at the sideline to tell him when to go. And waiting, waiting, <laughs> and he got the sign. Here we go. Quick snap, hand off to Lars. No. That's a different number, too. And that's Ben Legro, Colin Kroll. No, that was Larson. Yep, yeah, it was yeah. Larson. Brody um, Larson. On the carry. Good job there by Fredonia defense. And just let the clock keep running. So, Shannon, you know, with, with you know the score being what it is, and I know why I keep asking the question, me as a coach, too, because I have to think about these things. What... Does Fredonia do to get ready for Portville now? Yeah, you definitely have to, to regroup. You're going to have to, uh, I, I think this is one of those games you're going to have to build people back up, not rip them down. You know, like some games you need a, a butt chew and afterwards this this game. I mean, you're going to talk about mental discipline, I think, for sure. Um, Big stop. Levy on the tackle there. Um you got to talk discipline, and you got to talk. And here's there's a subcomponent, Derek Paradis, coming at 65 um, of Fredonia. I'm pretty sure it's Derek Paradis. Uh, it is. A senior. Getting him in on fourth down now. And Jake Helmer, we've seen on some offensive snaps, is coming in on defense. Uh, Walsh is back to punt. Davi White back to return. Clock running at 145. Good snap. Bacher almost, almost got, got there. To and it. That's a booming punt yes. there. Good job oh. by Davi White even catching that. But 
Again, there's a danger your your starting quarterback getting drilled. I was on waiting a, for the, uh, the fumble. Uh, I you know yeah. something well, bad you know, could taking happen. Taking a big hit there yes. is the last thing you want uh, to happen. But that's a beautiful punt. Hey, it was balls. high in the sky. <laughs> yeah, he can basically do nothing wrong tonight. Let's see what you know. There's Tim Field back out there, which is a good sign. We saw him leave in some pain earlier, so maybe it was just a really bad cramp. Yeah. Um, we weren't sure. It looked almost worse, but Bryce Bacher is going out on the offensive line. It's good to see. Again, get some other, you know, he's probably going to have to start next year on the offensive line, losing three seniors, three starters um, this year. So right. you, you, you got to get him some snaps in there. One thirty-two to go. Something. It looks like they might be short a player. Um, is that what's going on? The officials are calling something over. I think they were calling the ball boys over. Oh, okay. Maybe they didn't get the Ferroni offensive ball out there. I'm not sure. White still in there. Hands off. Bobbled snap there. Um, Swarming. You see some subs for Southwestern. I don't remember seeing one there. Adrian Torres before. Sophomores Hello. in a D DB. Uh, three. Michael Kunkel is in as well. Just looking for some different numbers. 60, I don't remember seeing before. Number 16, Tyler Trent McIntyre. Castleman. Okay. Yep. So they're getting some new names out there and players. Good. 88 looks like another new number. Kenyon McBride. Again, I think so. film session is going to be very interesting. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, high boy. snap over White's head. He has to jump on it. Oh, oh no. Did they call they, it down? I, I heard a whistle. He pointed down though. and out. He pointed the uh, umpires got it and, down. And The umpire's pointing at the ground. Well, he's very frustrated. I mean, how, how could he not be? I yeah. get it. Uh, 20, they're, they're just going to run. I mean, honestly, Fernando doesn't have to run another play, and they probably shouldn't. <laughs> not to, yeah, I, yeah, he's not going to take a knee in the end zone, uh, they is he? Stop the clock now, though. Okay, they're now they're it winding it. Yep. Yep. I, I, yep. I think... Uh, yeah, they're not going to run another play, and that's going to bring us to the end. I'm not sure why they blew that whistle, to be honest, but it doesn't matter. White never appeared to have it, and that's going to bring us end of the game. 48-18, Southwestern over Fredonia. Um, I don't know if they're going to let you back in the box, Rob. I don't know. This. I <laughs> mean... <laughs> uh. Just, I, I made it all the way this time. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. I didn't want to bring it up. But, uh, I don't you know, know. <laughs> um, I, you know it, from up here, again, we talked about this in the beginning, the miscues, the the turnovers, and the special teams. I mean, it, it just, it's not the Fredonia team I remember seeing last year. No. And it, it, those are the things, you know, it's, it's fundamental football in some spots. But, uh, again, I'm hoping Fredonia, they can go back to go back to the locker room. They can talk this out. They can go back to film and then execute this week in practice for a tough game. If I remember correctly, Portville's always been a tough team. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And, and their season's not over. It's not. They, I mean, they have, they're 0-2 in division. And, uh, but they need to run the table. But they can still make the playoffs. You know, I, I think division title is probably out. So there's going to be no three-peat for division title this year. Um, but they still could make a run, but they got they got the talent. They got to get mentally disciplined a little bit more. They got to stay healthy and get their players on the field. Obviously, losing Rush in the game last week, and he couldn't finish, and maybe he's not 100% um, this week. Sammy Adsrot, we kept seeing him get banged up last week too, and he couldn't play. Davi White. You see him limping around a yep. lot, and those are key players for this team. And if they're not healthy, they're they're not gonna win. Um, right. But with that being said, uh, the crew, you guys did a great job once again. I know I didn't name everyone. I didn't get everyone's name that was here on the camera tonight. 
Uh, looks like Cooper's out there. I haven't mentioned him. Uh, I'm not sure who else. Obviously, Jackson Hickey and Chip Rewalt um, doing a great job as always. Um, and Rob, thanks for joining me in the last minute. Um, I really appreciate it. I wouldn't want to have to do this whole game by myself. Good Lord. <laughs> this would have been, yeah. been one to talk about <laughs> to yourself. <laughs> and, uh, you know, and the Southwestern team, congrats to them. They played great tonight. Yeah, they had a very, very, <laughs> they had a fun night for them. Yeah, there's some highlights of the game, the few that were there, and that was a big hit there and fumble. But it's just, I mean, you saw when they're carrying the ball, a lot of the players, the ball's away from their bodies. It's loose. And yes, if the ball is, not, here, yeah. you know, and you saw it in a number of players, it's it's going to come out. Sooner or later, you're going to get hit, and that ball's coming yep. out, and it's a tough lesson to learn. But with that said, I think it's enough. <laughs> um, I had enough, but uh, I guess we sign out. Rob, uh, thanks for joining me. I'm Shan Davis, Rob Sherino. Good night, everybody.